is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. For 16 years, EJDConstruction.com has provided South Florida residents quality craftsmanship, accurate project management, and exceptional service. That's why EJDConstruction.com is an A-rated member of Angie's List and the Better Business Bureau. When you're looking for the right custom home builder for additions or home remodeling, please call my friend Eric at 305-433-4843. That's 305-433-4843 for EJD jdconstruction.com there's no need to drive around South Florida wasting valuable time looking for a new or certified pre-owned Acura. Go to the number one volume sales dealership in the Southeast United States. Craig Zins Acura of Pembroke Pines. Purchase with pace and space in a dealership tailored to your needs. From home buying to providing that personal touch. Contact the 2020 Satisfaction Award winner Craig Zins Acura of Pembroke Pines. 888-776-5123. That's 888-776-5123. Or visit them at 15601 Pines Boulevard in Pembroke Pines. Oh, great. You have a doorbell camera. Now you have a front row seat to your house getting robbed. No breaking into my house! Ooh, there goes the TV. I'm sure it'll turn up at the pawn shop. No, not the TV! Just because you can see them, that doesn't mean you can stop them. With Flow Wins, you get 24 hour monitoring, a free home security system, and professional installation. Plus, free doorbell camera, one that'll actually work for you. Get out of my house! Get out of the house! Call 1 800 Alarm Me. When presenting an award to an employee, athlete, executive, or fantasy GM, make sure you call Orvieto's Awards and more. For 35 years, these custom award specialists have been providing plaques, trophies, custom framing, while providing state-of-the-art laser and computerized engraving, UV printing, and glass crystal etching. They do all their engraving and printing in-house for quality control. Call Charles at 305-949-8098 or visit them at orvietosawards.com. Or Vieto's Awards and more, where recognition is rewarding. Welcome to Canesware. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Canesware has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fan shop. With more than 62 years of litigation experience handling insurance disputes, Welton Rayom is committed to resolving even the toughest insurance claims quickly. At Welton Rayum, they don't get paid unless you win. They handle complex personal injury claims caused by the fault of another in both state and federal courts. They handle auto, trucking, motorcycle, slip and fall, and bicycle accidents. Call 954-966-4646. That's 954-966-4646. Welton Rayum can help.
viewpoints, statements, or beliefs expressed on the following program by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily the opinions of FantasyXS.com, Media Group, Inc., ownership, management, sponsors, or website. When it comes to South Florida sports teams, very few in the media have witnessed, lived, and covered it like the Big O. Let's start the program dedicated to your favorite South Florida teams with a passion that's unmatched. The Big O Radio Show is on. Here's the Big O. Friday, all righty, all righty. Good morning, one and all. You can tell I'm a little better already, right? Uh, there's a little more energy coming out. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was an interesting day yesterday, and uh, you know I'm 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 old school, so I kind of uh, I power through everything, no matter what it is, right? And I try to just you know Sean knows uh, Sean and I are cut from the same cloth. We we grind, and uh, and so uh, yesterday I probably shouldn't have done a show. It was probably a stupid idea to uh, to do a show because I wasn't feeling well. And um, it ends up becoming, you know, an interesting story. And I mean, everything that happened to me yesterday was like kind of fucked up. And then at the same time, enlightening and and all kinds of stuff. So as you yesterday, I did a 22 minute show, which. That's just. That's, you know, anybody that knows me knows I can talk for two, three, four hours if I feel like it. I don't need eight, 10 minute commercial breaks. I don't need 30 minutes of breaks in the middle of an hour. I can talk and I always have topics. We come up with stuff to talk about. You know what I mean? I didn't have the energy yesterday. And so um, I, I got this cold on Friday. It hit me and then it got worse on Saturday and on Sunday. And I ended up becoming getting real, a lot of phlegm and stuff like that. So um, I started taking some medicine, but I can't take normal medicine like everybody else because I'm on high blood pressure medication and all that kind of stuff. So I have to take stuff that specifically doesn't have, which I did, by the way, I did. So I took it the night before and then because I'm fasting. You know, I wake up in the morning and I don't eat. I don't eat till the afternoon, actually. And I'm fine with it. I'm not hungry or anything like that because my body's already and my mind is already trained. And so I took my medicine, my cold medicine, on top of that. So I don't know what happened, but I got kind of like, you know, really down. And I was feeling it. And so all of a sudden... I cut the, sh- the, sh- the show short and I said, Hey, I got to go. I don't feel well. You know, when I do a 22 minute show, you know, I'm effed up. And so here's where it gets like really screwed up and interesting. So I get off the air. I say bye to Sean. He's like, Hey man, you know, get rest. He could tell right away. I was, I wasn't myself. He's been around me long enough. And so, um, at that moment, I don't know this, but I stand up and I go to my bedroom because I am just feeling like it's getting worse and worse for me, right? So at that moment, I didn't know this, but my daughter had just gotten back from school during her break because it's like 1030 or something like that. She has her lunch break or some something like that. And so, but she doesn't know I'm upstairs at my bedroom. She thinks I'm in the studio doing my show like I normally am, right? And so I make it to my bed and I don't know she's here because I didn't hear it at the moment. I'll continue with the story. And so right when uh, I feel like I'm about to go out, I'm about to black out, I'm dialing my wife on the phone and I'm about to tell her, hey, I'm about to pass out. And I didn't know my daughter was here. If not, I would have just like tried to scream to my daughter or something downstairs. And, and all of a sudden I black out, dude, I passed out and I passed out and I passed out on the bed because I sat on the bed and I passed out on the bed and I dropped the phone on the floor and the phone was just dialing my wife. And, and sadly where my wife works, there's really shitty reception. So I went to voicemail. So I pass out. Okay. My daughter's downstairs has no idea. Her dad's upstairs passed out. So I kind of you know gain my my conscious back and i'm like yo whoa and i 
I, I, I sit back up again and I notice the phone on the floor and it's, you know, like in the middle of whatever, finishing the call or whatever, it must have been in voicemail. Uh, Cause I must've been out, you know, maybe half a minute, a minute or something like that. And then I hear downstairs, my daughter preparing some stuff cause she's going to eat something. And so then that's when I got like, I was able to kind of yell out to her. So she comes upstairs, right? And I, and then I'm dry heaving. Didn't throw up, but I was dry. There's nothing in my stomach to throw up. So I'm dry heaving and my daughter's freaking out. And I'm like, you know, just relax. I'm just trying to, you know, get my composure again and try to get myself back again, you know, and all that. And so I'm able to call my wife. And so and then she comes over. And so kind of everything levels off. Right. And um, and uh, I, I get some water and I and, and then I get these cold sweats. And I've had cold sweats before, but these were like ice cold sweats. So. First, they were checking to see if I had a fever. There's no fucking way I had a fever. My body temperature was so low. It got to 94. Okay. So they're aiming the gun on my head and it's like 96, 95, 94. And they're like, wow, you know, and it's like, and so then, and then eventually it, I stopped sweating and it, I think I broke it at that moment. That's kind of what well, that whole craziness was breaking. And so then I'm able to kind of regain my composure and uh and dry up and all that stuff and and uh and and drink some water and all that and so then i i i, I rest and i relax for a couple of hours we set a, we get an appointment with a doctor so i can go see the doctor in the afternoon and um so i go see the doctor and i didn't go see my my heart doctor yet because that's the next thing that that'll come part of this story and so i go see the doctor and then we explain everything that's going on and so, and she goes, the problem is that you've lost so much weight that your medicine is too strong for you now. And so your heart doesn't need to work nearly as, as it used to because, and I, I weighed myself for the first time yesterday, by the way, uh, from 280 to 245. So I, I've lost 35 pounds. Of fit. I think it's more because I think I was 280 something. I'll tell you what it was exactly when I when I go see the doctor, my heart doctor for the for the for you know I haven't seen him in a while, uh, so I need to go see him now because they need to recalibrate my medicine. So that becomes a good news, you know. Maybe they can start eliminating some of this shit and and lowering the dosages and all that kind of stuff. So because I've lost so much weight, right? Um, that's where my heart doesn't need to work nearly as much. So I have to now be careful with that because even the medicine I took wasn't any, wasn't supposed to lower my heart rate at all either, but it was just a moment where I guess it was kind of the perfect storm. And man, I got to tell you, it was, I, I knew it was coming when I, when I signed off, I just did not feel well. And it just kind of felt like it was getting worse and worse and worse until I just completely passed out, you know, but it was just kind of a, a scare, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and then, you know, everything checked out. My lungs are perfect. Uh, my vitals were exceptional. Uh, my dude, you know what my heart rate was when I got to the doctor? 106 over 59. Or was it 109 over 56? It's one of those two. Either way, that's super low. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not used to that because I'm used to being in the much higher than that, 120, 130, 140. You know what I mean? Because I've been so overweight, you know? And so because I got rid of so much fat already and 35 pounds of fat, I have to actually go recalibrate my medicine now. And, and you know, Everything happens for a reason, right? I really wanted to wait till I was down to like 210, 215, go surprise my heart doctor. See, I did it. I lost all the weight, you know, but I can't. I can't do that because I have to go actually recalibrate and, and low. And, and it's a good thing because I get to take less drugs, which, you know, when you lose the weight, you got a chance at, you know, less drugs and all that other kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, it was uh, it was an interesting day yesterday. All I can tell you, it was very, very interesting. 
uh, to go through that experience. And, you know, just um, a good thing is everything's fine. You know, nothing's wrong. It's just one of those reactions. And, you know, it could happen to anybody, your lower sugar or whatever it is. And you kind of, you know, you know, pass out. But it was uh, it was funky, man. It was funky yesterday to uh, to go through that yesterday. That was, um, you know, but what can I tell you? We're here. We're good. We're healthier than we've ever been. We'll continue to get even healthier, obviously, because I'm going to continue to drop all this weight. I'm at 245, so I want to get down to somewhere in the, I don't know, but I got to see because of my frame, but somewhere in the 205 to 215 range is probably where I'm going to, I'm going to land and stay somewhere in that area um, from here on out. Um, Because I've already like, you know, and today I woke up and I had a a turkey uh, wrap. Uh, so my daughter cooked up some ground turkey that, uh, that I bought. And so, uh, I figured uh, I'd get a little energy, you know, from the get go in the morning today. So I did in, I eat a turkey wrap today. So, you know, it's kind of changed things up a little bit, uh, since I'm kind of ahead of the game and I've lost so much weight. Plus it's a, it's a spinach wrap, an organic spinach wrap with spinach and turkey grilled turkey which like you know that's not fattening at all you know what i mean it's all healthy i've eaten so much spinach it's going out of my brain uh so you know low on iron and all that kind of stuff they told me a while back uh i know when when the doc uh sees me he's gonna and and takes the uh the blood test he's gonna freak out because obviously i i know i've i've completely turned my numbers around with the way we've gone about this the last two months but uh yesterday was a scare and um an experience and maybe a lesson for some of you out and by the way remember this please remember this not everybody likes to talk about their medical issues okay don't treat everybody like me okay most people aren't like me all right i take pictures of where i'm at and what i'm doing and what they're doing to me and whatever and i you know i i live my life through you guys you know what i'm saying so uh, but there's a lot of people that do not ta- like talking. They would feel very uncomfortable talking and respect that. Respect that because that should be respected. That's private. You know, uh, I'm comfortable with it. I don't care. You know what I mean? I'm human and I'm like everybody else. We're going to go through all these things. But I say it because just in case you're also taking medicine and you have high blood pressure medication like I do and stuff like that, um, uh, blood thinners and, uh, you know, things like, you know, because of my, my prior heart condition. Uh, just want you to remind you that if you are losing weight and you're getting to a point where you've lost a lot of weight, you need to go see the doctor to kind of recalibrate your, your medicine because you may need less, which is a good thing. And you don't need stronger medication that you're, you don't need, you know what I mean? Cause right now I'm actually taking more than I need for my high blood pressure because I don't really have high blood pressure right now, nearly like I had before, you know what I'm saying? So um it's a lesson and that's why whether it's colonoscopy whether whatever it is i go through i tell you guys the same thing because ladies and gentlemen you're all going to go through the same thing and you're all going to experience it and so might as well talk about it and that way you can learn from my mistakes you know and, and and don't make them you know what i'm saying so there you go and thank you to all of you that reached out uh that was very nice of you uh, for reaching out. Uh, I know that in a, rec- when these kind of things, people will find out days later and a week later because they didn't listen to the show or haven't watched it in a while, or it's the football off season. And, you know, so you're not going to check in as much and, you know, wh- whatever reason it is, uh, I-, I know they're all out there. And so, but those people that did that, that keep up all the time, boom, there you go. No, um, I'm not getting no Zempic, my brother. I don't need Ozempic. I have this. This. When you have the power of the mind and you have the willpower to do whatever you want to do, you don't need any other kind of help. You know? So for me personally, other people may have medical conditions and they may struggle with, you know, I'm not that person. I'm not the person that really needs help. 
What I need is discipline. And that's what I always lack because I can't keep the discipline. And for those of you that don't know, just in case, um, who's the one that said now the Ozempic thing? This is the fourth time I've done this. So I've, I've lost weight before. I can do it. I've lost 80, 60, and 50. So this is nothing so far. 35 is not even close to what I've done. You know, well, it's getting closer to the third one. But um, I've done this before. It's all here, man. You know, everything is here. And you have to, you know, it's, it's just like fasting. It's all here. You know, you have, you, have to, you have to have mind over matter, you know, for anything pretty much. But I do understand that there are people that medically, they need help to control their weight. Okay. Those people, yeah, Ozempic or anything else, God bless you, bro. Use it, whatever you need. You know what I mean? Because you need help. But the the other side of it, I'm I'm on the other side of it. I can't say I need help. I need discipline. And when I get fat, it's because I am not disciplined. That's all it is. It has nothing to do with anything else. It's me. It's my fault every single time. I'm the one that chooses to eat a bunch of donuts. I'm the one that chooses to drink a bunch of Coke. I'm the one that chooses to eat a bunch of fried shit. You know what I mean? I'm the guy that chooses to do that. So then, you know, consequences, you know? So for me personally, it's not about that. It's about this. And right now I'm in that zone. And so that's the good thing. Since I'm in that zone, I'll get there. Now I got to stay in it is the key. That's what I got to do. That's what I haven't done the first three times. This time around, I have to stay in the zone for the rest of my life. So there you go. So that was my day yesterday, right when I got off the air. And any of you that were watching, you were probably going, this dude's not right. This is not, this is not the guy I see every single day on the show. So yeah, today I kind of seem more like my, even though I'm, I'm, I have a, by the way, I got tested for the flu and for COVID negative on both. So it's just a cold. Okay. So no flu, no COVID. Thank God. I have five stents in my heart. I don't want COVID. Um, I haven't gotten any more of the uh, vaccines. I, I got the vaccines early on and then that's it. I, I haven't gotten any more. It's, it's watered down too much at this point, the, the virus. So I don't think I need to get any more vaccines, but um, if I can get healthier, that would be a lot better actually. And so 245, let's see, we got about 30, 35, at least more pounds to go. So we should lose at least 70 in this run. Okay. Kyle Cockrell, number one, he says, dang, oh, I was worried about you yesterday. Hopefully everything's okay. Thank you. Jamie Zoria, praying, praying for a quick recovery. Thank you. Steve Chapman, hoping we're feeling better. Thank you. Miles Deep, Stephen Gonzalez, Ray Sosa, Joseph, Nico Jones, Sneak attack. Hope you're feeling better. Sean, what do you think uh, the rock handed Cody Rhodes during the handshake? I could see it being a lighter or matches to say he caused the fire. What do you think, Sean? I don't know. I haven't thought that much about it. I'm still uh, going back through and trying to go back through their history and see what it could be. I think he passed them a joint and said, spark it up. Maybe. You you lit the fire, spark Snoop it up. Was at WrestleMania, so it was going around. There you go, there you go. It was a joint. You started the fire, spark it up. Jay Gelfin says, "Good to know all is well with you, and your health is improving daily." As we were saying last night, teamwork. Yes, yes, yes. We'll get to that. Uh, Josh, thank you, sir. DJ Galaga, John Padilla, Alberto Larios. Who's our new uh, number three wide receiver, Alberto? Who who signed? Did somebody sign? Did did Odell sign? Did DJ Chark sign or something? I don't know. Uh, or is or, or Mr. Larios? You just haven't been here in weeks or months or something. I have no idea. I didn't know that. Uh, I must have missed it. I don't have anything on my notes that they signed a a new third wide receiver. Didn't know that. Uh, but we'll talk about it whenever they do add one. Dude 67, Alexis Palenzuela, no doubt. Thank you, no doubt. Sweet baby Ray, thank you, sir. Drago, one eyed Jack, thank you. Jason G, thank you. Vishal, 
Gordon Sumway, Ray Sosa, John Santos. Do you think hiring Rob Everett on staff will help influence McDaniel with game day coaching? I don't know if that's what he was hired for. It's just an offensive assistant. They didn't say it was a game strategist. I don't know if he has a game strategist. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I can't answer that. Can't answer what I don't know, sir. Uh, Cosa Nostra, Lisa Rose, thank you. Oscar Rojas, I always wondered this, and since you were in the radio business, Big O, when a song is played on the radio anywhere in the world, does the songwriter get a royalty? No. Um, what they do is um, every radio station pays for ASCAP. I think it's called, right? I think I want to say it's ASCAP, right? Uh, and so that's a fee you pay to the music industry to play music. That's why we don't play music here because we don't pay ASCAP. Plus YouTube doesn't allow that. And they tag you with everything and they, they stop your video from airing and all that kind of stuff. So uh, radio stations, you know, you have to pay ASCAP. And so if you want to have rejoiner music, I think it's like, um, I want to say it's somewhere in the neighborhood of ten, fifteen thousand dollars or something like that. But you pay some kind of a fee and then that goes to the music industry and then they spread out the royalties to the artists and then they get their pennies out of it. Pennies. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. That's kind of the way it goes. Uh, but, yeah, that's uh, that's 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 how they get around that. Drago says yesterday you didn't sound right. Yeah, no, dude, I, I wasn't right at all. It was it was kind of stupid on my part to really try to do a show because I'm that guy. I'm that idiot. Thank you, Crypto Fins. NorCal is in the house. Thank you, NorCal. Be careful when fasting and taking meds. Very dangerous. Yes, 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 yes. It's just it's just um, the perfect storm, you know. Uh, Big O, I hope you're feeling better. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, bro, first thing do in the morning when fasting is to drink 16 ounces. Of, well, no, I drink a lot of water. I drink a lot of water. Turmeric in your water will change your life. Trust me. Yes, uh, turmeric is fantastic. You are correct on that. Uh, morning Slim O, no longer is your body causing an eclipse. Keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're trying. We are trying. Big O, take a week off. Go to Cancun with the wife. Big O, I've been listening uh, since 560. You never take a vacation unless it's your anniversary. You're pretty good, bro. I don't take a lot of vacations. You're right. But in 2025, things will be different. That's all I can tell you. I just got to get through 2024. That's all. And then 2025 will be... Uh, at least what I'm hoping for and planning for will be a lot different, dude. So you probably will see this show in places you never expected. I'm just saying. Anyway. Ah, bull run, bull run, bull run. Uh, let's see. Turkey is the cleanest protein. Yes, it is fantastic. Uh, true fin fan, uh, feel better. Big man rest. We'll be here waiting for you. We ain't going nowhere. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Think blue Dodgers is in. You drop puns like crazy. Sometimes. Glad you're feeling better, says Troy. Thank you, sir. I'm starting to incorporate healthy stuff in my diet also, says Alexis. Good for you, bro. Good for you. Bigo, don't take shortcuts in your weight loss program. You're doing great. Oh, I'm not taking any shortcuts, bro. No shortcuts. No shortcuts. I'm just doing it right and and uh, and staying strong with it, you know? And I'm still cheating. I'm still treating myself to things along the way. Because if you're disciplined enough throughout the week, you can, you can treat yourself along the way and it, it will not affect you whatsoever. Problem is, I used to treat myself every hour of every day. And that's the difference right there. That's my problem. You know, most sauces is in Brian Landis just found out five minutes ago. A coworker passed away Saturday due to a stroke. He was only 48. Jesus. That's terrible. My condolences, brother. Yeah. 
Uh, I've been battling a bug, says Oscar Rose, for a week after I visited my son in Gainesville, coughing up congestion, slight fever, felt weak as if uh, as if I was uh, going to pass out. Well, I did yesterday, and it's just wow, dude. Like you, you know, something's going on, something's going on, and then you're like, lights out, lights out, dude. Wow. I think it's a bug that's going around. I don't know, man. For me, it was just kind of a, a perfect storm. Oh, uh, Cala Joe says, Orlando, days like yesterday, it's when you realize the most important thing we have in life is our health. Glad to hear you're getting better, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The good thing is it wasn't anything real serious. So um, thank you, Frankie. That's right, Big O. You don't need drugs to lose weight. Great job. Yes. Thank you, sir. Don't make uh, simple difficult. 210 pounds is a goal. Let's go. No excuses. Oh, we're going to get it there. We're going to get there. You know, we'll get there, no doubt. I can't I can't drink Diet Coke, Jamsville. Caffeine-free, sugar-free, Diet Coke, um, New Coke, Light Coke, this Coke, that Coke. I can't drink any of them, bro. None of them. I can never get used to any of them at all. Could not adjust, brother. And I tried to drink that Diet Coke as much as possible, and I could not get past the aftertaste. I just could not get past it, dude. I could never drink anything diet. It just does not taste good, man. So, you know, if I'm going to treat myself to a Coke, it'll be once in a while. And I'll, you know, and I'll have a, a real Coke, but it'll be once in a while. That's what I'll do from, you know, here on out. Uh, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing now, and I'm fine, man. Uh, victory cigar should be given to you, sir, surviving that health scare and feeling better. All right, Sean, we got Perdomo up. Let's go with a victory cigar. We were able to get up again this morning. We're living. Dub McZ says pro wrestling is cool again. Well, I got to tell you, it was dominating this weekend because it was all over my timeline. I saw it. A lot of you were watching. So Iceman says, Big O, wouldn't it be funny that the Heat draft Bronny James and keep LeBron from ever playing with his son? Karma his ass. That's funny. Um, the, re the reason why I asked you about radio royalties is because artists are, get are getting paid shit money on streaming platforms. Yeah, they are. Like I told you, that's why they get pennies. Thank you, Albert. Thank you, thank you. Devin Jordan. Health is wealth. Thank you, sir. I'm currently fighting a sinus infection myself. You got to keep trucking. We got no choice. No choice, baby. George Albanese, glad you're doing better. Big O, praise God. How exactly are you doing the fasting? Can you give me a rundown how many calories? I don't count my calories um, at all. I haven't weighed myself until yesterday for the first time. I don't count calories. I don't look at any of that stuff. I eat good, period. And so if you've never fasted before, Here's how I suggest you start fasting, okay? Don't eat for 10 hours. Then have two meals in 14 hours. Do that for three days. Then increase it to 12 hours. Then have your two meals or three if you want, whatever, in the 12 hours. Then do that for three or four days. And once you're, your body has adjusted to not eating for 12 hours, increase it to 14. And then now you're eating your two meals in 10 hours. Do that for several days until you're used to it. Then you increase it to 16 hours. Okay, so now you're eating your two meals or three meals, whatever you want, in eight hours. And your body's killing for 16. I go all the way to 20. I went to 18 and then 20. So I don't eat for 20 hours. And then in four hours, I have two good meals and some snacks or whatever. But I'm going to have stuff that's grilled. I'm going to have, you know, a lot of really healthy stuff, fruits, nuts, uh, stuff like that. A lot of water throughout the day, all of those kind of things. So you can eat a bunch of good stuff. You know, I, I eat uh, kiwis. Uh, I have a banana a day, an apple a day, uh, blackberries, blueberries. Um uh, then I, I, I eat a bunch of cashews, uh, pistachios, Brazil nuts. Um, uh, what's it called? And then, you know, turkey, chicken, fish, 
you know, a lot of grilled stuff. Uh, so that's kind of the way I do. I don't, I don't count any calories. I don't worry about the calories. If you eat clean, you don't have to worry about the calories. If you're going to start eating breads and sugars and, and, and shit like that, then you got to count your calories. But if you're really eating clean and you do what I'm telling you and you give your body time to fast so it can, so it can eat the fat from your body, because that's what it's done for me. It's eating the fat from my body. So, cause I don't give it enough fat in the body because I'm eating clean. So now it's got to search for fat during its dead time. So it, 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 it will digest the clean food that I ate quickly. And then it moves to the fat in my body. And so then it is able to eat up the fat in my body in the process. And since I'm really fat, right. It's got plenty of, it's a smorgasbord for it. You know what I'm saying? So there you go. So those of us that are overweight, trust me, your body's not going to starve. It's got plenty of food to eat off of it, but you just got to put in the good shit and then let your body eat out the bad shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of the way I do it. Okay. Again, you got to check with your doctor. You got to, you know, uh, make sure that you can do this, that you're healthy enough to do that, all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And then you start doing it. So I went through all those steps and then you're fine. You do that, you should be all right. But again, you know, make sure that you you got clearance. It's not easy, but it's all here. You, you don't realize when I tell you don't eat for 10 hours, you don't realize how difficult that is. Because you're used to picking here and eating there and eating that here and eating this and eating that throughout the day that you don't realize that you really you never take a break. So just start with 10 hours. 10 hours of not eating unless you're just sleeping for 10 hours. But if you're up without eating for 10 hours it is very difficult. So start with that and then you build it up because that you have you can't just go, hey, I'm going to not eat for 20 hours. And then the next day, no 20 hours and you, you might get a headache. You might get lightheaded. You might you might feel bad. So I would gradually work into it. It's not something you want to do like I do that. OK, no, I'm not going to eat for 20 hours. Now, you got to kind of train your brain for that because your brain, your body, they're going to go, dude, what are you doing? This is not who I am. You, you never do it like this. It's kind of the way it goes. All right, Welton Rayon, baby. That's the best in the business. 954-966-4646. Bankruptcy, condo damage, criminal defense, business owner claims, commercial litigation, personal injury, homeowner property damage. Save that number. The consultation is completely free. 954-966-4646. Let's get to our Welt and Rayom My Amid Dolphins report with the one and only David Ferronis. All rise, football fans, as the Welton Rayon Miami Dolphins report with David Veronis is in session. Welton Rayom has more than 62 years of litigation experience handling insurance disputes. They are committed to resolving even the toughest insurance claims quickly. Call them for a free consultation. 954-966-4646. Here's Miami Dolphins insider David Veronis. A ride, a ride, a ride. Pat in Nashville says you got to try Virgil's Zero Cola. Absolutely the best no sugar soda out there. It will shock you. No aftertaste. All right. They sell it in supermarkets? Well, I'll check it out. I'll try anything. All right, David. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Yeah. Uh, another week. Uh, again, uh, I'm, uh, I'm getting my mock draft ready. So, uh, so that's going to come out tomorrow. So uh, some exciting stuff in there. Yeah, you got Jared Verse falling to twenty-one. No, 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 and, and I haven't gone to the Dolphins pick, but I'll tell you, um, uh, Jared Verse is already off the board. So, uh, yeah, so uh, I don't have it happening. Sorry. Yeah, you don't have Troy Guyton uh, on the board there. Troy Guyton, then Taylor Guyton. I'm sorry, Taylor Guyton. The Taylor Guyton. Troy oh. is the Fountainu. I don't know how to pronounce that guy's name. The, 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 the there's some the possibilities. Two guards, the two guards tackles from Washington. In other words. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, um, yeah. I mean, it's still, still available. So I, I haven't, uh, I haven't gotten them out yet. Uh, so. Is Latou still available at twenty one? Who are you asking for? Latou. Oh, oh, Lyle uh, uh, Latou. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um. Y yes, I still have them available, but not. I haven't gotten to twenty one yet. So okay. 
I, I, I'm debating whether uh, he's going to be off the board in those picks uh, leading up to it. It's right around there. It's right around there where all those guys are going to go. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's somewhere in that area where they're all going to go. The good thing is that they've left themselves open to pick whatever the hell they want uh, with that first pick. And I don't think they're going to trade out of it only because I think they have a shot at getting an impactful player there at 21. And I think they need that. So I think they're going to stay there at 21 and not be a trade out. What do you think? Let's see. I mean, like I said last time, if there's a lot of players that they like uh, at that point and you feel like, okay, you have a good offer going back a little bit and you feel a lot of those guys are still going to be there by the time that other pick comes, then uh, I could totally see just adding more draft capital, uh, especially without that third or fourth round pick. So, um, nah, yeah, I mean, I, I would really like that scenario too because then you add that – you don't have that big middle gap in the draft uh, where, all right, first round pick, then you get your uh, second round pick, uh, and then you know, you're done early Friday night going into deep into uh, uh, Saturday. So, you know, I would like it if there's some activity because there's so many prospects there in that middle portion of the draft. Yeah, no, there's there's definitely – and, and you know, it's not like Chris Greer is afraid to trade. I mean, that, that exactly. guy – that guy is willing to make uh, trades uh, like crazy. Um, I, I don't know why people are surprised or like that Tua is working with the QB coach. It's like, it's kind of funny. Like that's what professionals do. You work on your craft on the off season to try to be better. And, and I, I commend them for that, but that's what every pro professional athlete should be doing in the off season. You got to find a way to get better, bro. That's kind of the way it goes. I don't care if you're a receiver or an offensive lineman or whatever it is. You should be working on whatever it is to make you better. So I like the fact, you know, he had to kind of work on his body the first couple of years. Now he's kind of working on, you know, the the, the part of his game because, unfortunately, not everybody comes into the league with a hip injury. And right. so that kind of alters how you go about things. And so he kind of had to figure out his body first. And now it's kind of, you know, figuring out his craft a little bit more. I like that. Yeah, fine-tuning the quarterback uh, aspects, of throwing mechanics, everything else that comes with it, uh, which he's uh, already prolific at, and we see it with it, his accuracy and, and everything else, and how he's added power into his throwing mechanics, uh, where uh, two years ago leading into that season, uh, that first one under Mike McDaniel where Tua really took off, and I remember writing about uh, his offseason, uh, everything that went into it, that 22 year and his work with his, his personal trainer, Nick Hicks, and uh, how he was sort of documenting uh, his improvements and different types of uh, uh, distance throwing that he was able to add that whole off season and uh, generating power from the lower half was such a big thing. And, and uh, uh, how he really bulked up his legs that, that off season and uh, how that helped. Uh, it's not necessarily arm strength, but it's, it's how you generate uh, that throwing power from that whole body. So uh, that was such a big deal that off season. And then uh, you know, going into last also, uh, he, he had all the jujitsu training and protect himself and adding muscle uh, more so so that then he can withstand hits. So he did that. He, he sort of checks off all these boxes in different off seasons, almost like I remember LeBron James, how uh, his four years with the Heat, every year he had one thing that he wanted to, whether it was, uh, okay, now the post game, I got to add it to my game. Whether it was a three-point shooting, I, I'm, I'm improving. Whether it's, all right, well, now I'm not going to let, opponents hack me i'm gonna uh get my free throw percentage up to a to a certain point and to a sort of just every offseason uh knocking off one one thing and the next and then uh now uh, you see him more slim uh, in, in all these pictures that we see uh from uh, from his golf tournament uh, all the the foundational work that he's doing uh, out in hawaii he had a big week of that he's got his luau now that he always does annually in south florida coming up uh, thursday night so that's exciting uh, as he comes back home and brings it uh, back to South Florida, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think some fans are, are looking at, oh well, uh, tell us about what he's doing with the with uh, with these uh, quarterback trainers, and it, it like if it's breaking news, and I'm like, well, it's not exactly breaking news. I mean, I, yeah, we had an idea that Tua would want to improve this off season, and now okay, he is doing that, so um, it sort of makes sense uh, from. From what I've heard, then uh, everyone he's working with, uh, the, the John Beck and Tom House and Adam Dado, they're uh, just exceptional quarterback coaches that have worked with some of the best. So uh, that, that's very encouraging to see. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think we kind of expected this. Yes, Tua is going to work on his craft in the offseason. He's not just going to take it from uh, 
end of the season to then, all right, I'm going to show up for OTAs mini camp and then, uh, and then just bridge into the season. And in such a huge year for me, I'm just going to uh, wing it. No, he's going to work on his craft in the off season. Of course. Yeah, man, of course. That's, that's what you should be doing. And, and it just makes a, a ton of sense. So it's, for me, it's not something that I'm really surprised about, but I guess it's the off season. So we can try to make something out of absolutely nothing. Um, I'm sure you watched the Drew segment on Channel 7. And he said something that, that caught my eye a little bit um, when they were talking about Odell Beckham. And then he also mentioned about Tyler Boyd. But he said that Tyler would not be as expensive as Odell Beckham, which I kind of looked at it the other way around. Yeah. that you would have to pay a little bit more for Tyler Boyd because he's probably looking for, you know, he's 29. So he's looking for his last contract. So he's looking for a multi-year deal. Whereas Odell Beckham, you don't trust him as far as you can throw him, even though he's talented. So you're not giving him a multi-year deal because you don't want to really make that. It's really a one-year deal. Like what you normally would do with a guy like this. So I, I found that kind of look personally for me, uh, I see uh, one guy was asking about the receivers. Who would I take? For me, I, I want DJ Chark over all of the guys that are available. For me, DJ Chark is better than Odell, better than Tyler Boyd, a better football player overall, an exceptional route runner. Like, I'm talking about a perfection route runner. And when you have a perfection-throwing quarterback in Tua that can throw precise routes, precise runners and precise throwers, oh, my God, it is dangerous. And so for me, I like DJ Chark more, more over than anybody else. But I don't know if you heard that from, from Drew. What If you did or not, what do you think about that? And what have you heard so far on the Odell front? Because it doesn't seem like there's anything going on. It looks like a stalemate right now. Yeah, it looks like a stalemate right now. And that does surprise me because I sort of uh, envisioned uh, a market where Tyler Boyd would – would be a little bit pricier than Odell Beckham Jr. So, so it does surprise me to hear that. Uh, I think it probably has to do with uh, how Odell views himself and uh, how you know he was this touted first round pick, uh, superstars to, to start off his career. Um, you know, reaching back, making that highlight uh, real catch, and then uh, lining up all those Pro Bowlers. But then you know some injuries have caught up to him and hasn't had a thousand yard season in a few years now. So, but I think he's still sort of views himself as, okay, I, I demand this kind of market. So, uh, and we saw it with what he got last year. What was it? Wasn't he making 15 million last year with the Ravens? Yeah. Which is a, a lot for, for him. And, and maybe he still wants to be in that double digits, even though uh, the Dolphins would not be paying uh, that much for, for a wide receiver three. I don't see it that way. So um, yeah, I mean, if, if I sort of always thought, okay, uh, Odell is, is is in the mix because you could maybe get him at a little bit lower of a rate than Tyler Boyd, even though I prefer Tyler Boyd slightly over him. But then, uh, if Tyler Boyd is uh, is is cheaper than Odell, then then why wouldn't you go that way? But um, you're selling me on DJ Chark too uh, with, with what you're saying. Um, you know, sort of. A, we, we talked about it last time, and uh, you know, the, I really only heard it uh, from you. But uh, personally, I, personally, I find it ridiculous. That you didn't go after him. Uh, mm -hmm. Now maybe he wants too much money. Yeah. That, that's the part I don't know. I don't know his agent. I haven't well, asked. I'm not sure his market. Yeah. I, I don't know. I haven't inquired about that shit. But for me, DJ Chark is. Oh my God. He he is so perfect for Tua. It's ridiculous how perfect he is for Tua. And so that's that to me. I don't know. But maybe he wants too much. Maybe he wants multi-year deal or whatever. I I don't know what. It, then again, you have a head coach that is in love with speed. Yeah. And Odell is the one that fills that check. Although Chark has good speed, you know, overall, but yes, Odell has probably slightly better speed. Yes. There's no doubt about that. I just, I don't know, man. Uh, I just think DJ Chark is as complete as it gets right now available out there. I'm, I'm shocked. No one has signed him. So uh, that, I gotta, I gotta ask myself what the hell is going on because it just doesn't make sense for me. He's a good player. man. He really is. All right, what do you got going on in the uh, Sun Sentinel so folks can check you out, my friend? Yeah, that mock draft, uh, I'm working it up. Uh, so, uh, so I haven't gone to the Dolphins pick, but uh, I have all day today to to crank that out and then get it ready. It'll be up tomorrow. 
So let's see what I'm going to do here. Am I sticking at 21 or am I moving back? Let's see. I'm, I'm mapping it out, seeing what's available, and then I'll make my decision. And, uh, and, and yeah, all the other positional previews leading up to the draft with the Dolphins stand at different positions. We just, uh, myself and my colleague, Chris Perkins, came out with the tight ends, him uh, uh, on the draft prospects, me on uh, where, where the things stand. So we're, we're doing receivers next. Right. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Follow him on Twitter at David Faronis underscore. You can, of course, uh, subscribe to the South Florida Sun Sentinel so you can catch his work every single day and many others there at the Sentinel. As always, David, thank you, my brother. We'll catch up on Friday. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. There you go. Welt and Rayom, they are in Hollywood, 954-966-4646. Call Jeff Welt and Daniel Rayom. Tell them that Big O sent you. They will take care of you. Bankruptcy, personal injury, condo damage, criminal defense, business owner claims, commercial litigation, homeowner, property damage. They do it all. And the consultation is completely free. 954-966-4646. This has been another session of the Welton Rayom Miami Dolphins Report with David Veronis. At Welton Rayom, they don't get paid unless you win. They handle complex personal injury claims caused by the fault of another in both state and federal courts. They handle auto, trucking, motorcycle, slip and fall, and bicycle accidents. Call 954-966-4646. Welton Rayom can help. Ride, ride, ride. Thank you, sir, out there. Uh, from, from the Scottish Big O fan club, eat more haggis and drink a little malt whiskey before bed, sir. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. What's the go-to cheat treat? Oh man. Donut, uh, a Coke, um, a steak, a fried steak, you know, not not grilled, but a fried steak, like a palomilla or something like that, you know. Um, yeah, silly stuff like that, man. Ice cream, you know, the shit that I eat all the time that got me to 280. Okay. Or 290. I think I've been over 290 in my time. I think I was at 295 one time. I I almost hit three bills. Yeah, dude. Scary shit. Scary shit. Uh, good thing your daughter was there with you at the right time. Yeah, no, I was, uh, it was, I was lucky. I was lucky. Get yourself a soda stream. I was a soda, uh, fiend and it helped me get off diet and regular sodas. Well, I'm off it. I'm off it. I'm off it. I'm good, bro. I, I don't drink Coke like it's going out of style or anything like that. Uh, padded Asheville. Oh, you got to try Virgil's. Okay. I will definitely try that. Um, it's amazing. Some people can't even do 12 hours. 12 hours of not eating is not, is not easy, bro. Big O, if you're the one making the decisions, who's the wide receiver? As I said, DJ Chark would be my guy. Blueberries and pumpkin seeds are good for a night snack if you get the munchies. Let me tell you something, bro. I haven't started on pumpkin seeds, but holy shit, the benefits from pumpkin seeds, as I've been reading... And checking it out, because obviously doing all this health stuff, I'm reading up on all the stuff that I need to eat and all that kind of crap. Uh, pumpkin seeds is one that all health experts talk about. The The amount of, of, of positives that come out of eating pumpkin seeds is ridiculous. So it's a great suggestion on your part, sir. I haven't started it, but I will. Um, stop eating at 6 p.m., then eat breakfast after 6 a.m. It's easy. You're right, because you're adding sleep in there. Uber Beaner's right. Yeah. Yeah. 12 is a good good one to start if you want to do it that way. Uh, the people that usually win the show alone is because they gained an extra 40 pounds before they started. The human body will take every last calorie. Damn right. Uh, good advice on the weight loss of medication. Thank you, Big O, because I'm in the same boat you are. Well, then get on our boat. Let's go, baby. Let's all, you guys should get on the health kick with me and Sean, by the way. Sean's down like 30 pounds, right? You're like 30 pounds? Yeah, Sean's lost 30 pounds. Consider your line of work before getting into serious fasting techniques. Very good point, Lofi. Yes, because if you do a lot of physical stuff, you will need to eat during that time. Lofi is right. 
Lofi is correct on that. Man of a thousand and five holds, Dubs MC, Richard Crosco. Thank you, sir. Jeremy says Major League Baseball is in trouble with Commissioner Rob Manfred. As for Commissioner Roger Goodell, is still getting a lot of booze from me because of his politics. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, overselling accuracy, in my opinion, accurate QB, uh, lots of accurate QBs in the Tua towards the top, but you, yeah, I, uh, I think you're 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 underselling ball placement and accuracy and anticipatory skills. You're completely overselling that. Not everybody can do that, my friend. Uh, Alf, OBJ is the best fit, and he never drops passes. He had one drop pass in the red zone for his career. Tyreek had four last year. OBJ can work outside and allow Tyreek and Waddle to dominate in the slot. Very true. I've talked about that in the past that you can move him inside because Waddle would be the guy that would go inside, probably, you know, since he's the tough guy and uh, and he catches better in traffic. So I would probably use Waddle a lot inside and you can use OBJ at times outside. So I get that. I, I understand what you're saying on that. Um, I just have much more respect for DJ Charka as a football player. And um, I think he's a guy that with Tua would – excel big time you know obj is a perfect style fit for it it's just the character part of it i still kind of even though he's been pretty good pretty good guy the last couple of years he hasn't really done the stupid stuff he used to do you know with the uh with the giants i just i'm more of a dj chart guy if anything but i totally understand the obj fit uh, Anthony, uh, everything explained at the top of the show, my brother, my entire, uh, whole thing that I went through, it's all there at the, at the beginning of the show, my man, you can rewind and check it out. Big O motivated me to eat healthy. Let's all get healthy together. There you go, John. Let's do it, baby. Oh, egg whites are a fantastic source of protein. Yes, they are. Troy. Yes, they are. Uh, I always love the texture of Coke. Whenever I get a craving for it, I drink club soda. Does the trick for me. I started fasting like you three weeks ago, hoping to lose like you. You will. As long as you fast and you stay with it, you'll, you'll be fine. Sam, I am. Big O, which way around would you go with 1,000 this week before the halving? All Bitcoin, all Ethereum, a mix of HBAR. Ali, thanks. Um, okay. Here's my problem with that question. Are we looking to invest long-term? Are we looking for a short-term gain and you just want to get in and get out? What are we doing here? Because I only talk about investments long-term. Okay, I'm a hardworking, blue-collar stiff. I don't have a lot of money. So whatever I'm investing, I'm thinking long-term. Remember how I tell you 2025? I've been consistent as a mother effort. Ask the Brooklyn Robs and the Lisa Roses of the of the world and the and the crypto noobs and some of the guys that are like into this shit and you know like they they know and and ladies that are into this, right? I think Kyle Cockrell is another one that's into it. You know, I, I can't remember everybody, but you know, some of you that are that have been into it for a while with me, okay? When we were in the dead bear market. Three years ago, I told you, this is more about 23, 24, 25. And this is three years ago. Okay? So I don't know what you want. If you're looking for a quick hit, then I got to, like, tell you something that I think is going to, like, multi-X like crazy. And that's a little bit more of a gamble. But if I if long-term... Okay, if I'm telling you Bitcoin's going to go to half a million and a million, then just put in a Bitcoin. Because a thousand will get you over a percent of a Bitcoin. As I've told you all out there, not a, not a financial advisor. But if I'm you, I'm trying to get 20 to 25% of a Bitcoin. You don't even need to get a complete Bitcoin. You get 20 to 25% of a Bitcoin long term, you're going to have a lot of money. You're going to set yourself up. You're going to set your kid up, whatever it is. Okay. So, you know, if it's 60,000 right now, what is it? 60, because it went down right now. Um, 
6976. All right. So uh right now it'll take you uh about what 25,000? Something like that. So if you end up getting a, a 20, 25% of a Bitcoin, you know. Well, actually that's 20% would be about 20, about 20, about 17,000 actually. 17, 18,000. You know, I know it's not easy, but it's a lot easier than 69,000. So I don't know what you want, my brother. So if you want like a quick fix, then we're gambling here and we're trying to pick the one altcoin that's going to take off during this bull run in the next couple of weeks for you to pick up more money. You know, I don't know what you want to do. And that's, it's hard for me to answer that question. Yes, sir, Sean. I think you're talking about Sam Miami. He said long-term. Oh. Responded Bitcoin. back long-term. Bitcoin put the entire you just got the it was at 71 almost 72 we haven't hit 73 7 which is the prior and shorts are going to get liquidated there which is going to pump us to 80 right away your thousand is going to start paying off right away i would put it all on bitcoin because you cannot lose with bitcoin not a financial advisor but that's the way i look at it you cannot lose with bitcoin the entire world is figuring it out all the most rich, the richest and the most powerful people in the world, and now countries are getting behind it. Why? Because they know. They're there because they've figured it out. Countries have kind of figured it out a while ago, but they didn't, you know, like China now is getting all in, and so is Japan and all that. But you know why they didn't do it, right? Because they don't want to go against their own dollar. But you know, it's kind of the you know what we've been talking about on the show for years now. The cat's kind of out of the bag. The dollar's going to shit. The yen's going to shit. The pound's going to shit. The euro's going to shit. They're all going to shit. Every single currency in the world pretty much is going to shit because it's been completely mismanaged. I've been explaining this for a while, but the average person doesn't keep up with that kind of stuff because they don't care. It's boring, yada, yada, all that stuff. They don't understand that. But in it may not happen in our generation here now, but I could see in 15 to 20 years, 25 years, I could see the dollar completely crumbling. Our debt is so bad. The Fed said it was unsustainable. I already explained it to you. On, in February, I told you all the taxes that were collected from us 63% of it went to pay the interest on our debt. So they collect all the taxes from us and 63% of it is just going just to pay our debt. So I've explained it to you. The dollar has lost 25% of its value since 2020. Okay? And Bitcoin has gone up 2,000% since 2020. Just the math just doesn't jive anymore. So Bitcoin, 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 Bitcoin. You shouldn't even have a savings account. Having a savings account in a bank is the stupidest fucking thing there is in the world. Okay, let me just be brutally honest with you. If you have $200 sitting in a savings account, you are a dumbass. If you have 2,000 or 20,000 or 25,000 or 250,000 sitting in a savings account, you are a royal dumbass. You put that same money in Bitcoin and it's going to multiply to hell. And you're going to go, wow, why didn't I do this earlier? Because you bought it at 69, it'll be at 89 soon, it'll be at 109, or it'll be at 119, or it'll be at 139, you know. And you're going to go, wow, my money is multiplying. So that Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. You're looking long term, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. There's a finite amount. If you don't grab your own, it's gone. It's gone. Okay. I mean, and this is the same message I've been telling you for years now, dude years nothing has changed and it, it's all come to fruition everything i told you i told you banks would be closing two three years ago sure enough you know anyway 
Uh, one more question about fasting. How are you incorporating your Cuban coffee with me? It's two to three double espressos a day. Yeah, no, you're going to have to cut that shit out, dude. No. Got to cut it out. You know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to have your Cuban coffee during your four hours or six hours or whatever. When you're fasting, your non-fasting time, you can't have your Cuban coffee while you're fasting, bro. You, It's here. You got to reprogram your brain, brother. So, go, like I said, go eight hours without it. Go 10 hours without it. Go 12 hours without it. Go 14 hours without it. You can then program yourself that way. Don't do it all at once. Because the, the Cuban coffee and the caffeine, your body is so used to having all that caffeine in its system. If you take it out all at once, dolor de cabeza. Headache. So, you got to do it right, bro. Gradually. Uh, Sai Love All, thank you for the love on the super chat. Big old Rachel Balkovec hired my son-in-law as a pitching coach last week. Pretty pumped now. I have an excuse to leave Indiana for Miami. There you go. Nice job. Come on down, bro. It's too damn cold. Only good thing about Indiana, I'm joking here, by the way. I'm just having some fun, was that you could have watched the eclipse at the Speedway yesterday. That's about it. No, no, it's, a, it's actually a pretty cool town. I, I've gone there many, many times. I enjoy it. But it's too freaking cold for me to live there. There's no freaking way I would live in Indianapolis. I'll visit it, but no way I'm living in that cold-ass area. Uh, oh, just ordered you a case of Virgil's. Should get you, son of a bitch. You are the best, bro. Pat in Asheville is one of the most selfless human beings I have ever met on the planet. Okay? One of the most beautiful people out there, you know, and he's constantly doing stuff. He is amazing. Just because I believe he did that. He knows me. So he knows he's got my personal info. He's got all that. So he can order something to my house if he wants to. So thank you, Pat. You're the best, dude. I'll try it on the air. All right, let's uh, take a break. Hour number two, Manny Navarro. Let's talk a little Canes football next. I think I know what this is. Houston, we have a package. Hello? No matter where you are, the Sloman Shield Home Security System guards your home. With next-gen perimeter protection, 24-7 monitoring, and interior motion sensing. And right now, get a free Sloman Shield Security System and doorbell camera, all professionally installed, for free. Shield your world, the Sloman Shield. Welton Rayom has more than 62 years of litigation experience handling insurance disputes. They're committed to resolving even the toughest insurance claims quickly. Call them for a free consultation. 954-966-4646. At Welton Rayom, they don't get paid unless you win. Property damage claims to your home, business, or condo as a result of a hurricane. Welton Rayom can help. Water, mold, fire, smoke damage, Welton Rayom can help. Call 954-966-4646. The viewpoint stance or beliefs expressed on the following program by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily the opinions of FantasyXS.com, Media Group, Inc., Ownership Management, Sponsors, or Website. If you're a Miami sports fan, there's only one store to go to, and that's Canes Wear at Miami Fanwear in Davie. They're your one-stop shop for all your inner Miami CF, Canes, Dolphins, Panthers, and Marlins merchandise. They have hats, t-shirts, game day jerseys, and so much more. Located at 2655 South University Drive in Davie, and open 24-7 online at caneswear.com or innermiamiwear.com. Call them at 954-835-5597. Canes Wear, the spot where inner Miami and all Miami sports fans shop. Time for Canes fans to get what they want. Information, insight, and perspective. It's the Canes Wear Miami Hurricanes Report with Manny Navarro. Exclusively on a Big O Radio Show. Here's Big O and insider Manny Navarro. And there he is, ready to go, locked and loaded. How you feeling, my man? Doing great. How are you, O? Much better. Much better. Had a really interesting day yesterday, so uh, we uh, recovered. Anyway, good to so, hear. Good to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, kind of a freaky day yesterday. It was uh, 
It was interesting. Anyway, uh, let's get to it. What'd you think? By the way, what'd you think of the national championship game uh, yesterday? Well, impressive uh, big men for both teams. A lot of length on UConn. That's what I took away. I said, man, this this team can really uh, shut down a three point shooting team with all the length they have. Just well coached. I mean, they're they're a machine right now. I, I remember covering the Final Four when Florida went back to back, and thinking, yeah, we may never see this again. But uh, obviously, college basketball uh, in today's game, you can you can still do it if you get a great coach. Uh, like Dan Hurley, and and you and you have a school that's so committed to basketball, like UConn is, as far as NIL and everything else. Yeah, I mean that's their thing. That's their yeah. that's always been their jam, dude. And, yep. and 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 getting Dan Hurley is getting one of the great great uh, you know college coaches that's out there. I mean that maniac is absolutely awesome. And and by the way, to me, the, a couple things that stood out from the two championship games. Um, both games were exactly the same. Mm -hmm. The deeper and more athletic team yep. won. The team that had the best player lost. Yeah. And it was a beautiful example of team game because Edie and Clark were the best players on the court, but they didn't have the best teams. And their teams weren't nearly as athletic or as deep or as physical as, yeah, Edie can be physical. But the entire UConn team can get physical with with Purdue, where the entire South Carolina team could get physical, you know, right. with Iowa. To me, it was like two mirrored games, dude, watching it. It was like the same results because you had the same deficiencies. Correct. And and really, I mean, the kudos to uh, Dan Hurley. I mean, he lost three guys to the NBA last year off of that team that won the national and basically <laughs> I think five of the top eight players or whatever that he had on that team and, and rebuilt it quickly. And part of it is just really good work in the transfer portal. That's a guy who knows his roster, knew exactly what he needed, went out and got the pieces he needed and, and uh, just paired them up with what he had coming back. And, and uh, so look, man, uh, college basketball. Diara off the bench had nine points. Yep. Edie only had the Smith kid score 12 outside of that their bench guy outscored everybody else on that team. He just didn't have enough support, dude. Well, Frank okay. Martin, uh, who, who, of course, in Miami high days, as we know, and he's been coaching in college for so long, obviously at South Carolina, I think he's at UMass now. Uh, our buddy Frank Martin said on Twitter last night that the key to this matchup is going to be UConn's length getting out to cover Purdue shooters. Purdue was one of the best three-point shooting teams in all of college basketball. I think they only took seven threes last night because UConn just denied them what they could do. And so, and all of that is size and athleticism and, and, and uh, length on the perimeter to, to be yep. able to disrupt uh, that passing game and, and not allow them to do what they wanted. So uh, again, just a great coach, great system, and he knows exactly how to use the portal and that's what it takes to win. And South Carolina was the same exact yep. thing, dude. They were too strong, too athletic, too deep. And Iowa just had the best player, period. And by the way, her passing, Caitlin's oh, yeah. passing is as elite as it gets, dude. I mean, let me tell you something. If her players were better at finishing, because they left a lot. I watched that tournament. They left a lot of her passes, you know, incomplete, dude. And she set you up beautifully that you should have finished the damn play. If it's not for the... Um, the girl with the two fuzzy, um, what's yes. her name? Uh, Stolke? Haley. Yeah, oh, Stolke. Stolke yeah. She was the only one that really was kind of more clutch for her and came through when she did pass to her. But so many of her teammates, man, her passing, holy shit, for the next level, that's going to be fun to watch because she'll be passing to people that are much more skilled. Yeah. So they won't go to waste nearly as much. It's, it's the one shot that I have to take at Iowa that they left a lot of easy points on the floor during that tournament yeah to me it's i watch her and i just think of steph curry like when yeah. steph was at his mvp peak like just being able to do it on both you know passing and scoring from anywhere on the court like that's that's who she is in, in terms yeah. of her game so yeah. she's uh, an yeah. offensive stud or anything like that but but uh but her offensive skills holy shit dude wow yeah yeah, yeah. Really not, not very many people can see the court the way she sees the court that's uh that's super impressive and Edie. Brother, it only took like 50 years for somebody to figure out how to throw a hook. Yeah, right? It only took that long. Like right <laughs> right now, Pat Riley, Pat Riley must be so sexually aroused the last few weeks. Like, 
I got to do anything to draft this guy. Because, you know, Pat Wright, that's his guy. Right. That's his kind of player, bro. That Seven footer, that's what he wants. Dominant, yeah, dominant big win. Side out, yeah. You know, Spoh's like, no, no, I don't want any of that shit. But yeah, but if it was Pat Riley, he's like, yeah, that'd be his like, first pick. Guy guy right now, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take some. I'll take a, a, my fat ass goes with the ice cream. He goes with the player. You know. Yeah, exactly. By the way, the ice cream is pretty good. I gotta say, I gotta give Ed ice cream a little props there. But yeah, I don't know how people have not learned the hook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's still effective, especially in college. I mean, uh, there's just not a lot of size. Everybody wants to put five shooters out there. So, uh, you know, kudos to uh, to Matt wait, Painter wait. for getting that, that guy on that team. Okay, but he's not Kevin Willis. He's right. Not a, he's not a black hole. Right. Like, he used to pass it into Kevin Willis. That shit never came out. Right. We'll pass it out to his shooters, dude. So he's so you know he 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 under he he goes. No, with he this. knows how to play the game. He knows how to play yeah. the game in the post. There, yeah. there's no doubt. There's 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 there has to be some intelligence to play that position. It's not just get the ball and turn and shoot. Yeah, right. To, you have right. to play it. Yeah, he's not Mister Hog, and that's right. what I love about him that he's able to pass out. Now I'm interested to see who drafts him and how they incorporate him, and and does he start to influence? bringing back a little bit more because dude the, the the art of playing with your back to the basket that shit has disappeared bro yep five that's shooters it. blame blame spolstra the day put lebron at the five i mean yeah. that's really yeah. that's really what it comes down to but but it's interesting to have a traditional center like that who has really good footwork overall mm -hmm. and you're like okay now will this influence the game to go a little bit more back to that sense Right. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Be but interesting to watch, but uh, those guys are hard to, to, to come by though. I think that's that's the issue is just so many so many big men now. You go to these AAU tournaments, they're just all sitting at the three-point line. They don't want to go into the into the post and play that. They just think that their future is relying on the three-point shot and and so uh kudos to Edie for developing that part of his game and and staying with it and being unique. He's a unicorn now. It's kind of the frustrating part about Bam because right. He's never dominated either. He's never really been a great post player. And he's certainly not a great three-point shooter, although he's improved, but he doesn't really take enough to really, you know, it's not the volume that you can actually measure him by. But overall, that's kind of the frustrating that he's kind of been a tweener in that sense. Mm -hmm. and this guy's going to come in into the league right away, and he's going to give people trouble. Because right. if you have shooters... Yep. Kind of reminds me a little bit of what Orlando did years ago with Dwight with, Howard. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I, I would say the one thing with Bam, uh, he has improved the jump shot. That was not existed the first several years in the NBA, yes. and and now he's, he's actually got an, he's actually got a shot he can make consistently. So yeah, kind of like UD when UD was. Yeah, in well, the what prime. I mean is he doesn't like go all out on the three, and right. he's really not a great post player either. Mm hmm. It's the funny part. It's as good as he is. He really never tried to. He hasn't really tried to dominate inside or outside. You know what I mean? It's right. it's, it's just kind of weird. It's a Draymond Green mentality. He doesn't want to score, bro. Yeah, yeah. He just exactly. doesn't. He wants yeah. to set screens. He wants to play defense. He wants to pass. He's the scoring is the last thing on Bra on Bam's mind. That's why I call him a super role player, and I can't call yeah. him a star or franchise player. I can't do that. He's like a. He's actually what Bosch was forced to do mm -hmm. that's him he, yeah. he excels at being the number like he would be the greatest number three of of this franchise history if because he embraces that shit yeah being absolutely. that third wheel not the first and second that you have to like carry the load every single night meanwhile bosch is dying to be one or two <laughs> he's right. just happy being three it's 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 just an odd thing all right what's the latest in recruiting uh with the canes this week well, they picked up a commitment. They're sixth of the 2025 cycle from a tight end out of Ohio. Luca Gilbert is his name. He's 6'7", about 240 pounds. Uh, only caught 15 passes. So when you look at his production, you're like, wow, that's not a whole lot of production. But everybody in the country wanted him. Ohio State, Michigan, a lot of the Big Ten schools were interested in him. Uh, good athleticism. And, you know, Miami's uh, the tight end they just signed in this last class, Elijah Lofton, the kid out of Bishop Gorman. I wrote about this for The Athletic uh, a week ago when I did my spring observations. I think he's going to be a running back. I think, you know, he's kind of was undersized. He was about 6'2", 230, 240. 
And I think they're 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 sort of transitioning him to running back now. And he's a guy that, that you can see lining up, catching a lot of balls out of the backfield, getting a few carries, kind of like C.J. Donaldson, who uh, if you watch uh, Big 12 football over at West Virginia, uh, Donaldson's a kid that came out of Miami and, and went to West Virginia and, and went from tight end prospect to running back. And is just really, really good. And so, uh, you know, I think for Miami, the tight end position is important. You think about Elijah Royal not being able to stay healthy for the last two years. Uh, ninth year, Cam McCormick, <laughs> you know, those are those were your options. That's why the tight end position took such a, a steep drop because of the injuries to Royal and, and having to play guys like Riley Williams, who's a true freshman, not ready to block and do all the things that was asked of him. So I think uh, I think tight end is an important position in this recruiting class for Miami. And uh, they're looking for a guy who could potentially come in and be a, a true number one down the road because I think Lofton is probably headed to being in the backfield. All right. I'm just going to keep thinking, my name is Luca. I live on the second floor. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's just kind of what comes to my mind when you say Luca. Anyway, what are you working on in the athletics so folks can check you out? Yeah, we just came out with our all-state team for Georgia. We did Florida about a week ago. So this is like an ongoing series that we keep doing where we, we kind of look at the modern recruiting era. You got Cam Newton on that list there. Cam and Newton ahead of, uh, yeah, Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence, who are obviously really good quarterbacks to come out of the state of Georgia. So Video came out over the weekend of Cam, like he was at some place and some resort or somewhere or something, and there were a bunch of – some kids playing football, and he just got out there and started throwing the football with the kid. I thought that was really cool because – Right. Well, he's got, a, he's got his seven-on-seven seven team, and everybody knows yeah, he got into that huge fight with – Like just out of the yeah. blue where he was at, and he just – like because he's dressed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. He started throwing football to people, the, to those kids. And yeah. I'm thinking, my God, those four or five kids must be on freaking cloud, cloud nine. Right now that an NFL yeah. quarterback is throwing them the ball. So that was good job by Cam. I, I like that. Absolutely. That, you know, so. Uh, so uh, that piece and uh, what's next? What else are you working on? Yeah, we're going to do a uh, kind of already written it. Uh, Max Olson, who works with me at The Athletic, one of our national reporters, he knows Cam Ward really, really well because, he, okay. first of all, Max lives out in Texas. Cam's from Texas, knows his dad, knows the whole situation, went out and wrote a big story about him um, when he was at Incarnate Ward before he transferred to Washington State. So we got a lot of, like, details and, and you know, as far as when, when Cam decided to first announce he was turning pro and then decided to come back to school um and play at Miami and transfer to Miami so we have a story sort of outlining that and, and his impact at Miami I think he's Cam is finally going to talk to reporters on Thursday at the University of Miami so we're trying to line up we've got our story written we're just kind of waiting for Cam to talk uh so that we can add uh, whatever perspective he wants to add on Thursday to uh, his time at Miami but uh, there'll be a Cam Ward feature uh, there'll be some more recruiting stuff I'm kind of trying to do a big picture story on on Miami's 2025 class and what they're kind of looking at so there'll be there'll be plenty of stuff to read in the athletic, and of course the podcast. Uh, you know, our listeners can go and check it out whenever they whenever they're not watching you. Oh, they can come listen to my podcast. There you go. There you go. Appreciate it as always. Follow him on Twitter at Manny underscore Navarro. Make sure you subscribe to the Athletic and go to Canes where we'll be there broadcasting tomorrow live. And remember, use our code Big O ten. You will get ten percent off if you go in person. Or online and online, if you order over $99, you will get free shipping at Caneswear.com. Manny, as always, thank you, my brother. We'll catch up later in the week. Thank you, brother. Talk soon. You got it. There you go. Manny Navarro and our Caneswear Miami Hurricanes report. Welcome to Caneswear. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Caneswear has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at caneswear.com. Caneswear, the spot Miami fan shop. A ride, a ride, a ride. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. What good does it for a QB to have a cannon of an arm if they're not accurate enough? Exactly. Uh, let's see. George says, yes, you've been uh, very consistent with your crypto talk for years. I haven't changed. Um, let's see. What do you think about XRP coming out with a stable coin? Well, Jonathan, uh, the stable coin is used because... What you're doing on your blockchain 
and XRP is going to do it. And, you know, Cardano has it and, and many other many other chains have their own their own utility coin. And what they're doing is uh, when you when you come out with stable coin, utility coin, it's something that you're going to use inside your network, probably. And so what it is, it'll be backed by certain currencies. And then at the same time, the people that are building businesses on there and they want to interact and, and do business, they will use that stable coin inside the XRP system in order to exchange. Like, uh, I think it's called DJED and Cardano, um, uh, VThor for VChain, you know, uh, they all have like their own stable coin, utility coin, stuff like that. But is it going to be like a dollar? No, it's not anything like that i wouldn't wouldn't you know listen with xrp i never thought it was going to blow up like people thought it would blow up we'll see where it'll move but i don't think it was going to move like people thought it was the uh the the cap market cap is so huge now it's ridiculous um let's see mo sauces i just got into gold and it's doing really well big o now mo okay uh let me explain a couple things for you okay um, first of all, I hope that you own the gold and it's not just paper that they tell you they have your gold. Make sure you own the gold and gold. Let me give you the chart right now. It is doing well at the moment. It is up at 13, I mean, uh, 2348 right now. Okay. Now I am showing you the five year movement on it. Okay. And in April of 2023, it was at 2016. In August of 2020, it was at 1,944. I'm going to go 20 years now. Here. Uh, in 2012, it was at 1,774. Uh, and right here. In July 24 of 2011, it was 1837. Okay. So we are talking years. We're talking 13 years. And it's moved from 1800 to 2349, 500 bucks. That's not a lot of movement considering the amount of time. Now, if you just bought right now at $2,000 and you're at 2300, you're feeling good. You got, it's a good movement. You know, that's, uh, I believe that's 15%, right? Okay. So it's great. 15% is good. If you bought it there, that's fine. But remember with gold, there's a problem with gold and there's a good problem. There's a bad problem with gold. The good problem is that it's always going to hold its value. I don't know if it's ever going to skyrocket the way Bitcoin has from zero to 60, 70,000. That's movement. You know what I'm saying? Bitcoin moves in $500 in minutes, in seconds. Um, gold takes forever. You can't move it anywhere. You can't carry it around. You can't have it digitally transferred from one place to another in seconds. You can't do any of that kind of stuff. So it's a great store value. And it's there's nothing wrong with investing in some gold and silver. I would just not invest a ton. Why? Because they find more gold every day. Every day they find more gold. And so when they find more gold, it kind of brings down the value because there's more gold out there and there's more gold to be mined. There's only 21 million Bitcoin and we're already through 19 of it, 19 something. So there's like a million something left. And after that, it is finito, done. They're not going to print anymore. They're not mining anymore. They're not adding anymore. None of that. Okay. Like I had some guy, oh, they can um, do another, uh, they can build another chain off of it no they can't blackrock cannot build another chain none of it it's a closed protocol it's done over so that's the thing and they find gold every day somewhere in the world and that's where i would tell you it's not a bad investment it's a good investment it's a good hedge against you know inflation and your money but It's not going to be what Bitcoin is, not even close. And it doesn't have the flexibility of Bitcoin. But to give up, keep a portion of your money in it 
it's better than putting it in the damn bank. That's for sure. So good move by you, sir. Just be careful. Don't overload thinking that you're going to, you know, catapult like Bitcoin, that you bought it at 30 and now it's at 70. That's not going to happen with gold. It's never going to happen with gold because they find too much gold. So there you go. Um, Big O, just think if we ran our personal finances like most countries run their, oh my God, we're all broke. We're all broke. Johnny D says, great day to buy more crypto. Buy the low before it skyrockets. Amen. We'll be checking out some pumpkin seeds, brother. It is crazy, the, the health benefits of pumpkin seeds. That gentleman is right. Uh, would you play Tua in a five-year option? Would Oh, pay Tua. Yes, dude, I have no problem. I, I, I would give Tua a long-term contract. I get it. I have no problem with it. Uh, we were worried, Big O, after what happened uh, at the show yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Well, rewind. Go to the beginning. You'll hear the uh, the story. It's kind of crazy. Well, I'm taking care of myself. It was just kind of a freakish thing. But I am taking, I'm, dude, I am taking care of myself big time. Big time. Uh, have the doctors checked your sodium potassium levels? If those are off, you'll have heart rhythm issues. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm getting. Uh, I'm going to start. I'm going to get my uh, latest blood work and everything, which it's all. I know it's all going to be good. dude. It's all going to be good. I'm not worried about it. You need to diversify your portfolio and gold is a great way to do it. And silver. Yes. It's just I wouldn't make it a major portion of my of my portfolio. You know, 5% or something, not much. I wouldn't do much of gold and silver. Like, oh my God, it's half of my portfolio. I don't think it's worth that. You know, what are you going to do? Carry around gold all over the place? What are we in? 1820s? Oh yeah, it's real. Come on, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, thanks for the reminder on checking in with the doctor and adjusting your meds during weight loss. There you go. Oh, with Miami being the biggest Hispanic culture in the U.S., why can't the Marlins not be a bigger market? Why should they be? They suck, dude. They don't even try to win. It has nothing to do with the market. It has nothing to do with the fans. It has nothing to do with the stadium. It has nothing to do with anything but shitty owners, dude. Wake the fuck up. What kind of a dumbass question is that? It has nothing to do with us. Zero. Zero. Inter Miami makes a commitment. Stadium's packed. Panthers make a commitment. Stadiums are packed now. And that's hockey. And it took them a few years, but go watch, go look at the arena now. It's packed every night. They made a commitment and people finally bought in and understood, oh, goddamn, Kachuk and all this. And, and they're on board. That's all it is, dude. It's it's simple math. You make a commitment in this town. We make a commitment in this town. You don't care about your team. We won't care about your team. That's how we are. And when you had mediocre Panther owners that weren't trying like Viola and Sifu, we didn't show up. Seven, 8,000 were there, 9,000, the hardcores, the northern people that came to live here. And that's it. That's all you got. And you would have not packed that soccer stadium if you're not putting stars on it. And the Moss brothers know because they live here. They understand our town. So, yeah, you want to make money? Great. You can make money, but you got to put money into it. This, uh, You think we're going to show up just to show up? Fuck you. Fuck you. Stick it, Marlins, where the sun don't shine. You're a bunch of fucking losers. That's all. You don't try to win. You don't care. You eliminated Skip Schumacher's contract so he can walk away at the end of the year because I'll repeat what one guy put yesterday on a, or two days ago on his theory, which I, I believe it. Peter Bendix told him his vision, and Schumacher said, what? I'm out of here. Uh, eliminate my last year. Come on, man. I mean, w w were you born yesterday? The problem are the owners, nothing else. John Henry, Loria, and now these clowns. That's all. There's no commitment. 
screw the Marlins. They don't try to win. What are we lying here? You know, forget it, dude. You don't try. Why should we care? It's pretty simple. I don't think it's that difficult to figure out. You go and, and get some stars and care about winning. We'll pack that stadium. You don't. No one should go. Period. Uh, let's see. Precious metals are for holding wealth. In other words, insurance for your wealth. Exactly. Eat one garlic stuffed with olive. Very good. For, it is, but I hate garlic. I can't eat it like that. Yeah. Like even with garlic bread, I'll have one, but I won't have a lot because it's just, oh, dude, I, I'm not a fan of the taste of garlic, bro. And it regurgitates and it comes back. And, oh, dude, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just not a fan of garlic. And I know it's super good for you. Uh, when you have owners like Bruce Sherman, it doesn't matter what your market you're in. You, you get cheap results. Exactly. Exactly. We're a smart fan base, bro. That's it. You know, they 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 think we're a fat, bad fan base. No, no, dude. We're an exceptional fan base. We support you, but we're not just going to go. Brother, we're not the dumbass Cubs fans. Okay? Pretty simple. Tribune Company owns the Cubs. They never try to win. They don't give a shit. And the bleacher bums are all there. Well, guess what, idiots? We don't do that in Miami. Now, we'll just go to South Beach or Las Olas. Or we'll go to the Keys, or we'll go to a bar, and we'll go have drinks. We're not giving you our money just because you have a baseball team. See, Cubs fans of the past, you know, I'm talking about 10, 15, 20 years ago, you are stupid consumers. You're not, you're not dedicated fans. You're stupid consumers. It's pretty simple. You keep going to see a bad team. You're not a good fan. You're a dumbass. It's pretty simple. If you're going to watch a team constantly that doesn't care about what I'm not saying having a bad year. We can support our teams that are trying and they have a bad year. That's fine. I'm talking about teams that literally don't care about winning. And you think you're a good fan. No, no, no. You're, you're an enabler. OK, you're part of the cancer of the sport. You enable that owner to continue to be a bad owner by going and buying tickets. You're not a good fan. You're a dumbass. OK, you're a fucking dumbass. All right, I'm going to sit you in the barber's chair and I'm going to screw up your head and you're going to pay for it. That's exactly what you're doing. You know it's going to be a disaster, and you still pay for it. You're an idiot. In Miami, we're not idiots. In Miami, if you don't care, we go to Las Olas. If you don't care, I'm going to the movies. I'm going to a restaurant. I'm going to a concert. I'm going to fish. I'm going out to the bay. I'm going to eat by the river. I'm going down to the Keys. I'm going to the swamp. There's a lot of shit to do here, bro. I'll go on a cruise. I'll go travel. That's why they live here in South Florida. Because we have so much to do that the entertainment dollar, you better entertain. You're not a loyal fan for going to see a bad product that doesn't care about winning. You're a dumbass. Are we clear on that? Because, you know, I've been doing talk radio for 34 years now. And I always loved that whole thing about, oh, no, but we're loyal fans. No, no, dude. No, 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 no. There's no, you're loyal to what, the A's? You're an idiot. You're a fucking idiot. That's what you are. You're a dumbass. You know they're not trying to win. And yet you continue to go? While Loria was in charge, I told everybody to stay away from the place. I've never done that in my life. But for him, for you, for you, I'm going to make an exception. 
You know, I promised a long time ago to somebody I love, I was never going to go back to being that person. But for you, for you, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to go equalizer on your ass. Okay? Seriously. There, there, there's no such thing as a loyal fan. Okay? To a bad team. You're a dumbass. And I'm sure I'm insulting some of you that over the years, you have to look at it and go, man, why am I so stupid? And if you don't, well, then that's your problem. But anybody that goes to buy Marlins tickets, you're a dumbass. If you're a season ticket holder, you're a dumbass. Because you're encouraging them to continue to do what they do. The message is sent when you don't show up. When you don't buy tickets and don't buy shirts and hats and jerseys. The problem is it just never happens. You always have a level of suckers that give into it. And they know it. I know how we work in South Florida, but it should be like that all over the world. If you don't care about your product, why should anyone in your community care to support you? You don't have to win the championship every year. You don't have to get to the playoffs, but damn it, dude, you need to try to get to the playoffs. You need to create hope for people. The Marlins never create any hope. We're not the problem. We're not the problem. We've never been the problem. We never will be the problem. Okay? Your product is good. We show up. You try not to win. We don't show up. It's simple math. And all of our teams prove it constantly. Because we're not a soccer town. And the Fusion weren't selling until they started winning. Until we got rid of you know, Horowitz cheap ways. And then all of a sudden they allow, he allowed, you know, the front office and the coach to start doing their thing. And then when he noticed that he had to make some kind of a money commitment, he was out. So you don't get the support, but it was going, it was getting better because they were starting to win. They got to 14,000 a game. We will support any sport in town. But you have to prove to us that you want our entertainment dollar. If not, dude, I'm happy. I'll go to Texas de Brazil for the night and have a whole bunch of uh, meat with the family and relax. Oh, I'm good. No, I'll just go to the Keys. I'll go to the Isla Morada Fishing Company and relax and have a meal, watch the sunset, feed the sharks. You know, I got lots of shit I can do here in South Florida. Got the zombies. What is it this week? Uh, the zombies. Uh, they're at the culture room. Well, no one told me about her. Anyway, so there's lots of things you can do, man. We're not the problem. We've never been the problem here. We're a terrific sports town, but you need to earn our support. We're not dumbass Cubs fans. We're not silly-ass Oakland A's fans. We don't do that shit. We don't go supporting teams that don't care about you. We don't do that. That's not our thing. You care about being in Miami? Okay, great. Then let's show it. Show it to us. Dolphins have not won shit for years. But, brother, they don't stop trying. And I respect that at least. At least they're trying. And since Viola and Sifu took over, that's all they do. And those are the two new teams, and they passed up the Marlins, who have been here longer than them, who have had, who have championships, have an opportunity to build on something, and they never do it, bro. They never do it. And baseball gives us these owners. They could have given us Moss, but they didn't. Instead of the local guy, they gave us an out-of-towner who doesn't give a shit about us. Mickey Arison has his business right there in front of his arena. It means something to his ass. He can't have a shitty product. Jorge Mas, the Mas family, they've made their bones here their entire lives. You think they're going to misrepresent South Florida? Fuck no. 
Wayne Huizinga was here for for Lauderdale guy. You think he was going to misrepresent? I know he didn't win with the Dolphins, but damn, his baseball team won a won a World Series. His hockey team got to the Stanley Cup, and he tried. He bought every possible coach that he could. He brought Jimmy. He brought Saban. He brought Pars. He tried everything, dude. You got to try. But they gave us our local owners that actually give a shit about our community because they live here, they work here, they employ thousands of people here. Moss, Arison, Huizinga, these are people that employed a ton of us in South Florida. It means something to them. Bruce Sherman doesn't mean shit to South Florida. It's just money for him, period. How little can I get in, put in, and how much can I get out? It's just a money grab for these guys. They're not, they don't have the money to go out there and put it all out on the table and take some losses like Viola and Sifu have taken for years until they start seeing profits. That takes balls. That takes investment. That takes patience. That takes commitment. Something the Marlins have never shown outside of Huizinga. You know, it's just, so we're, we've never been the problem. And I love the people that pick on our town because they're, they're uneducated and they don't understand us. And I'm sorry, if you want to brag about being a Cubs fan in the nineties or the early two thousands, you go ahead, clown, you go ahead, clown. You pay to see what every time shitty baseball, you're an idiot. Okay. Those are the facts. So if you want to keep paying for bad franchises, the whoever has gone to the commanders games the last few years, you think you're a real fan? You, you think that's a fan? That's a stupid ass consumer. Do not give any credit. Don't give any support to bad ownership. I don't care where it is, what city, what, what sport, you got bad owners, don't show up. That's the best message you can send them. Okay? It's the way it goes. But I, 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 every time I hear that, I laugh at people because they don't get it. They just don't. People moved from all over the country to live here. So you think they moved so they could go to shitty events? Brother, they moved down here because we got the sun and the beach and boating and all kinds of fun and all kinds of stuff that we can do. They were hustling and bustling in Chicago and New York for years in that rat race. And then now they want to come down here and brother, they want to go to Disney World and they want to go hang out in the beach and they want to go get a, a, a cabana out, out west in Marco Island and just kick back. They want to go deep sea fishing, snorkeling. They want to go down to the Keys and relax. That's why you moved to Florida, dude. You moved to Florida because you do stuff here you can't do in Chicago. You can't do in New York. Year round, by the way. Just can't do it. And so what? I came down here to spend my time to go see a bad baseball team or a bad hockey team or a bad soccer team or a bad football team. I'm not wasting my time. The, the faster, which will never happen, but the faster fans think like that, the better off we're all going to be. Put these owners on their P's and Q's. Jorge Mas wanted to buy the Marlins. It has nothing to do with Jorge Mas. That had to do all with baseball. It was, a, it was, a, it was a, a dirty decision by Loria and baseball, and they screwed us. Uh, been, big O been hooked on Panther hockey. So much fun to go to the games. Also watching on TV is great. Well, going Saturday as well. Might go next Tuesday versus the Maple Leafs. Of course. Marlins are awesome. Ross is the same big O. Ross uses hope by getting. No, he doesn't. There's no splash signings, bro. They're trying to win. 
They got one of the better offensive minds. They drafted a quarterback that's been in the MVP race the last two years, Jalen Ramsey, Teron Armstead. I mean, they had plenty of players on their team. That's quality. And they've made the playoffs the last two years. So not sure what you're talking about. I'm talking about teams that don't try to win. They're actually trying to win. But that's all right, bro. You know, you're you're consistently like this. So it's all it's all good. I can't I can watch them uh, lose while I'm having a great meal at Flanagan's. True Marlins fans right there. I was almost tempted to buy Flanagan's night at Lone Depot Park for the Flanagan's jersey, but now I won't do it. Yeah. A pretty good steakhouse in East Hialeah. Porto Alegre Brazilian Steakhouse. Never heard of it. Maybe we'll check it out. So I got some dolphin stuff to talk about. We've gone a little for longer than we did yesterday, huh? Hey, you guys catch um, Tua out in Hawaii doing his thing for the kids? No surprise there. Uh, what, I, what I did find kind of interesting, did you see the two players that were there to help him with the kids? Jalen Ramsey and Teron Armstead. And so I mentioned that because where was Tyreek? That couldn't have been planned ahead of time. Or you kind of want to have the right people around kids. Because I figure for an event like that, Tyreek would be perfect for it because he's good with kids and all that kind of stuff. He's a fun-loving guy. You know, but you know, Tyreek has got a lot of off-the-field issues. So I, I found it kind of interesting that it's Jalen Ramsey and Teron Armstead. Two, you know, impeccable people. We're not talking about players. Forget about the player part. Two impeccable people. Two people that carry themselves, you know, like top notch, you know, um, and two people that have, have, you know, surrounded themselves with good people and all that. And then there's always a good vibe around those two guys. You know what I'm saying? So it's interesting that those were the two players that were there because I didn't see Tyreek. Did you see Tyreek there at all, Sean? No, it's kind of interesting. I thought that was, uh, you know, saw the interviews. ESP, I, I retweeted them on ESPN Honolulu. Nothing earth shattering. It's just like Tua. Tua said nothing earth shattering. Um, let's, uh, here's, here's where desperation meets the offseason. Tua says absolutely nothing about his contract. He just says exciting times ahead. That's it. You know, he's just very general, very nice. And everybody makes an article out of it. Out of nothing that he said, absolutely nothing. Now I'm just gonna let my agents take care of it and move on. Exciting times coming. Tua tells us exciting times are coming. So what are you trying to accomplish with that article? Are you trying to set Tua up that if it isn't exciting, well, he pro he promised exciting times. Oh lordy. Anyway, so um, the other thing that. It shows you it's the off season, and where Tua. Uh, I I don't understand this, but you make it sound like Tua is different than any other player out there. So now he's working with the three D QB club, John Beck and company, and all that stuff, which is great, just fantastic, which is something that he should be doing. And so this is a a, a terrific opportunity for him to get better. But you have to understand something that happened to Tua that did not happen to most quarterbacks. He came into the league with a hip injury. So first he had to rehab his hip in order just to get on the field. Didn't work on football. He had to work on his hip and get healthy enough to get on the field. And then, I, then he's a rookie on, at that point. 
with a bad coaching staff, especially a bad offensive staff, and a head coach that hates him, basically, and didn't want him. So he's got to deal with that for two years, overcome that, overcome some injuries too along the way, right? And so then now he has to also build his body back up again. Because after the hip, you obviously, in the, in the surgery, you're going to lose strength in that core. So he had to rebuild the hip and rebuild that core. And then going through the injuries, he figured, okay, I got to work on my body, making it a little bit more tougher for these kind of situations, which he did. Now that he's gotten past the part of his body and figured out what he has to do, get rid of the ball quickly, all those kind of things, and I'll live for the next play, he now gets to work on the QB mechanics of it. So when Nick Hicks, he was working on strength and rehab and, and everything else to, to, to get his body right this is the next step. You know, part of a quarterback's life is you get into the league. One, you have to transition from one speed to another. Two, you have to then learn players and coaches and tendencies and all those kind of things, which is what he's doing now over the night, over the last couple of years. So you're building all of that, you know, and it takes a while to kind of put the complete package together. Sometimes you're really fortunate like let's say a Ben Roethlisberger or a uh, Tom Brady, where you run into a great team and you don't have to do a lot early on and the defense can carry you and all those kind of things. And it allows you to kind of grow that way. But when you come into the league with a bad football team, the learning curve is a lot harder because now you, you don't have greatness around you. So it's harder for you to succeed. And then it's hard. The learning curve also gets harder. So it's harder for you to pick up all that experience. It's what people don't understand. And so he came into a terrible situation, not a great situation. Now it allows him to grow in this process. And this is where we're at in year five now, where he had to deal with the health stuff. He had to overcome the body stuff. Now he wants to sharpen those, the, 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 the throwing skills with it. I love it, dude. I think it's fantastic, and it's not a big deal. It really isn't. It's what he's supposed to do. It's what I told you before, except differently. If the owners care about their team, then you got to try to win. And if you do, we'll respond. If you don't, you don't. Well, does he want to become great? Does he want to become elite? Does he want to become the best? Does he want to become a champion? Then you do whatever it takes to get better that offseason. And the 3D QB camp is a terrific way. John Beck has been training a whole bunch of quarterbacks for a while now. And he's fantastic at it. So good stuff for Tua. Not a big deal for people out there to make it like something out of nothing. Like, oh, my God, this is, you know, uh, this is like incredible. Or No, this is what this is part of his progression. This is what he's supposed to do. Now he doesn't have to work on his body anymore. Now you see him, he's a little slimmer. I bet what he's doing now is he's getting, he's going to be just as strong, but it'll be in a lighter frame is what he's going to do. That's all. As he figured out, maybe I don't need to be too thick. I need to be a little thinner so I can be a little bit more agile. And then at the same time, I can still protect myself. So I'm sure he's kind of doing the same thing, but kind of adjusting and tweaking and figuring things out. And that's what you do every year. You figure things out and you go, okay, where do I need to improve? Okay, what do I need to do to improve in this area, that area? That kind of stuff. Remember, folks, you can make a donation through Cash App or Venmo at Cash Big O Show. That is Cash Big O Show. Ho Yoon, thank you, sir. Appreciate you, my friend. As he makes a donation on Venmo. And he says, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Ho Yoon. Very kind of you, man. As always. Uh, let's see. And remember cash app or Venmo cash big O show. And you can also make a Bitcoin donation. And considering there's a nice little dip here at 69,188. Perfect time to make a Bitcoin donation. Uh, let's see. Give us some real owners for the Marlins, man. 
soon as the GM crap went down, it's been a sad state of affairs. Yeah. Because they have no commitment to winning. That's why, dude. Great on Tua for working on his craft. I agree, Tony. Is that the same Beck that played for the Finns? Yes. Same same Beck that played for the Finns. Uh, oh, do you expect Tua to run more this season? No. I don't think so. Uh, I The only time... Troy, he's not... I don't want him running unless there's five yards in front of you, eight yards in front, take it and slide. He did that this year, actually. Actually, I should say that he did more of it this year than he had before. But I don't want him running. He's not that guy, bro. He's not that guy. He's the Drew Brees. He's the Bob Greasy. Play him that way. You know what I'm saying? That's what you got to do with, with him. Play him to his strengths. Don't try to make him what he is. So I don't want him scrambling and I don't, I, he's not Lamar and he's not um, it's, uh, the kid from Philly. These kind of guys that can, that can run hurts. That's not his thing, dude. He can damage from the pocket, move it around, manipulate it, some boots, some waggles, all that kind of stuff. Do that with Tua and you'll be fine, bro. You have no problem whatsoever. Don't play him like he's Dan Marino. Mike. Big O, are you okay? Wasn't here until now. I'm good now. But yeah, it was uh, very interesting what happened to me yesterday. You'll have to rewind to the beginning of the show and I'll explain the, um, the health issue, the health scare I had yesterday. Okay? Remember, we don't repeat here. So it's all there. Uh, perhaps the charity insurance company won't cover a dude who allegedly broke a lady's leg during football drills. <laughs> oh, you got me with the cold laugh now. That it's uh, I can't laugh. I'm going to have that stupid cough for a few weeks now. Damn. Anyway. Ah. Uh. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Top of the hour. All right. Perfect. Uh, give me two minutes. Top of the hour. Uh, we'll come back. I got a couple things I want to talk about. Uh, a dolphins, actually maybe two dolphins things. Uh, I want to talk about a funny story that's tragic. Well, it's not funny, but it's kind of not funny, but weird there. But that's better. The better adjective weird and depressing. Like, yeah, you know, we got that little music stuff, a uh, little entertainment, all that good stuff. Hour number three. 22 minutes yesterday. We're going to go into hour number three next. Oh, I think I know what this is. Houston, we have a package. Hello. No matter where you are, the Sloman Shield Home Security System guards your home. With next-gen perimeter protection, 24-7 monitoring, and interior motion sensing. And right now, get a free Sloman Shield security system and doorbell camera, all professionally installed for free. Shield your world, the Sloman Shield. When presenting an award to an employee, athlete, executive, or fantasy GM, make sure you call Orvieto's Awards and more. For 35 years, these custom award specialists have been providing plaques, trophies, custom framing, while providing state-of-the-art laser and computerized engraving, UV printing, and glass crystal etching. They do all their engraving and printing in-house for quality control. Call Charles at 305-949-8098 or visit them at orvietosawards.com. Or Vieto's Awards and more, where recognition is rewarding. There is no need to drive around South Florida wasting valuable time looking for a new or certified pre-owned Acura. Go to the number one volume sales dealership in the Southeast United States. Craig Zinn's Acura of Pembroke Pines. Purchase with pace and space in a dealership tailored to your needs. From home buying to providing that personal touch. Contact the 2020 Satisfaction Award winner Craig Zinn's Acura of Pembroke Pines. 888-776-5123. That's 888-776-5123. Or visit them at 15601 Pines Boulevard in Pembroke Pines. Oh, 
I think I know what this is. Houston, we have a package. Hello? No matter where you are, the Sloman Shield Home Security System guards your home. With next-gen perimeter protection, 24-7 monitoring, and interior motion sensing. And right now, get a free Sloman Shield Security System and doorbell camera, all professionally installed, for free. Shield your world, the Sloman Shield. Welton Rayom has more than 62 years of litigation experience handling insurance disputes. They're committed to resolving even the toughest insurance claims quickly. Call them for a free consultation. 954-966-4646. At Welton Rayom, they don't get paid unless you win. Property damage claims to your home, business, or condo as a result of a hurricane. Welton Rayom can help. Water, mold, fire, smoke damage, Welton Rayom can help. Call 954-966-4646. on the following program by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily the opinions of FantasyXS.com, media grouping, ownership, management, sponsors, or website. When it comes to South Florida sports teams, very few in the media have witnessed, lived, and covered it like the Big O. Let's start the program dedicated to your favorite South Florida teams with a passion that's unmatched. The Big O Radio Show is on. Here's the Big O. All right, we are back. Hour number three of the program. Appreciate you all tuning in as always. Thank you for keeping it locked here on the show. Uh, let's uh, let's get off our 3A graphics sports calendar. Alan Blanco and the great people there at 3A graphics, custom printing and embroidery. Uh, UConn defeated Purdue yesterday, 75 to 60. Zach Eady with 37 points, 10 rebounds, and two blocks. But unfortunately, Newton, Castle, and Kligan and all those guys were just way too much for him as a uh, UConn wins the national championship back-to-back -back national champions for them in basketball the heat are back in action tonight against the hawks no duncan robinson uh seven o'clock we got a face off with the panthers and the senators at the emirate bank arena marlins as expected get routed by the yankees seven nothing they figured out luzardo in the second go around so he gives up seven earned runs and four and two thirds tonight it'll be carlos rodon versus are you sure it's not AJ Puke? Because he's got a nine ERA. You keep telling me it's Puck, but I got to think it's more Puke there, Sean. But anyway, the Pukester will be on the mound at 7.05. I know it's Puck, by the way. I just got to have some fun with it. Uh, Wednesday, by the way, in Estadio BBVA, Monterey is hosting Inter-Miami for the CONCACAF Champions Cup. And they... They better come up with one hell of a performance. That's all I got to say. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's your 3A graphics sports calendar. All right. Ah, uh, yes. What else do we have here going on in the world of deportes? Or it could be something that isn't de deportes. Although... Sex could be considered a sport, right? An American woman was found dead in Spain over the weekend, and authorities believe her death was a result of extreme sexual encounter gone terribly wrong. The body of a 44-year-old woman who's not been named publicly was found in an apartment in Plaza Enrique Garcia's Herrera in Malaga. Now, the, do the apartment buildings in Spain also have to have seven names? I, I get it. It's this thing with us in our Latin culture. Yo me llamo Maria de la Paz de Cruz de Santa Se, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what the, why, why do you need 800 names? 
So this apartment in the Plaza Enrique Garcia Herrera in Malaga. Do we, do we need that many? I'm just saying. Could it just be Plaza Enrique? That's it? I don't know. Anyway, as I digress, uh, the victim's 50-year-old husband, who is also American, was arrested in connection with her death, which police believe occurred accidentally in an intimate context. The case was initially investigated as gender-based violence, but was upgraded to homicide due to the evidence indicating extreme risky, risky sexual behavior. The woman's husband appeared on Monday in the local investigation court where the judge ordered him held without bail. The investigation is going on. This is some asphyxiation type of crap, right? That's some weird stuff, bro. I get we all float our boats differently, but do we have to float our boats with death in the mix? Aren't you supposed to try to achieve orgasm, not death? Not exactly sure how that is sexually arousing. I'm on the brink of death. That's going to orgasm me? No, I don't think so. I think I'm going to end up taking a dump is what I'm going to do if I'm about to die. I don't know. Kind of weird, right? More like defecating, not orgasming when you're in that stage. Weird. We'll keep up with that story, see what it is. I say as asphyxiation. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Some of you kinky people might be able to know some of the other stuff. Uh, Big O, have you seen Dune 2? I never saw Dune 1. No, I did see Dune 1, and I was bored out of my ass. So I, uh, I'm i not going to watch Dune 2. But we're so, we're so good the three hours movie of the year, maybe. Really? Wow. Some people have told me they weren't impressed with it. I doubt Beck trained Brady. I'm pretty sure Brady trained Beck. Well, no, it's, you know, he was there before Beck. So you can't. Um, but uh, Brady did work with a QB coach back in the day. I forgot. It, it, Tom, was it Tom, whatever, the guy that's in Atlanta? He He did work with a QB coach. Can you look it up, Sean, years ago? He did work with a QB coach, but it was one that a lot of people had worked with back in those days. I'm pretty sure of that. If I remember, I remember, I think I remember reading it back in the day. This is 20 years ago, bro. Um, uh, wow, just say the tape. Big O, you are the man for doing a four-hour show after the interesting day yesterday. Yeah. Well, it's not four hours. We're in the third hour, and I don't even know if I'll complete this third hour. Yes. Yes, sir. It was, uh... I guess Tom Martinez. Did I not say Tom? No, the only problem is he passed away in 2012. So he's okay. not with the Falcons. Yeah, but this was years ago when he went to him. Like yeah, early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just like, yeah, dude. Yeah, uh, a lot of these guys do that, man. There's another guy. Um, God, back in the day. God, you got to remember all these little things. From my experiences, I forgot the name of this other dude that also got a lot of quarterbacks to go. Beck is now one of those guys. He's one of those top three guys that are training, you know, QBs and things like that. So uh, he's apparently one of the better, better coaches out there for for quarterbacks. So it's just, you know, it's it, it's funny because um, the best coaches are usually the guys that aren't necessarily stars because stars don't want to be coaches. You know, Joe Montana is not going to coach anybody and neither is Tom Brady and neither is Dan Marino. They don't, they don't have time for that shit. You know what I mean? Very few like Deion Sanders. That shit is rare, bro. And he's doing it in college. He would never do it in the NFL. I, I can I can bet my life on it that Deion Sanders would never coach in the NFL because he's not that guy. He doesn't he will not be able to deal with NFL players. So he wants to mold young people, which you know what? It's the best thing for him because he's good at that. He's he's going to reach those kids better than, you know, the average guy because he can relate, man. He's good at that. He's really, really good at that. But it's it's funny how, you know, because I don't know if that Frankie, I doubt John Beck, I guess you were kind of joking or whatever. But just in case if, you know, um, most of these coaches, they sucked. They were, you know, just because you can coach, you know, you 
the, 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 a lot of the people that teach didn't necessarily excel. You know what I'm saying? At that highest level, they excel at other levels, but it's harder. You know, sometimes you can see things and you can explain them, but you can't do them. You and I can say, Oh, throw it to that guy. But if we were sitting, if we were standing in that space, you wouldn't have seen that guy and you wouldn't be able to throw it and you wouldn't be able to get it to him. But you know, we're smart asses. We're sitting on our chairs. Going, Come on. He's open. What's wrong with you? You know, that kind of shit. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, wow. Just say the tape. Big O, you are the man for doing a four-hour show. Thank you, sir. If Inter-Miami doesn't win the CONCACAF, even though it's early, would you consider this season a semi-disappointment already? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, because it's about the MLS season. So I want to see what you do in the MLS season. It's not really about the CONCACAF. If you win the CONCACAF, that's fantastic. That'll be awesome. But you've also ruined your chances at winning the CONCACAF because you overplayed Messi in the preseason. So a lot of your dumb decisions are pay are not paying off for you now. And the fact that you even played him on Wednesday was also stupid. I don't care what they tell me. You're injured. So I'm going to play you on a Wednesday to then play you on uh, I'm, I'm sorry i'm going to play you on a saturday to play you on a wednesday and you're coming off an injury a hamstring injury and i need you to win that game in the Concacaf. i don't know if messi can finish that game on wednesday tomorrow night because of what they've done to him because of the way they ran him into the ground last year and because of the dumbass preseason they had this year traveling around fifty thousand. so if they fail, my friend, guess who I'm blaming? Guess. Management and Tata. Ownership, management, Tata are all to be blamed. Okay? They're the ones that created a team that's heavy offensively, lacks defense, right? So they screwed their own players. They're the ones that chose to trade away some key defensive players that could help them. And they're the ones that have chose to run their old players into the ground. You have Campana. You have Robert Taylor there. You need to use those guys more. Well, I don't even know if you can use Campana because he can't even stay healthy either. He, are, he just got injured in this last game. That's his other bugaboo. But you need, you need to start mixing things up, and you didn't. So I don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow if Messi can finish the game. 10.30 start tomorrow. So I have, um, I have a real problem with uh, ownership management and coaching right now with Inter-Miami and some of their decisions that they've made. Uh, I think they've mishandled a lot of shit. Okay? So that's kind of the way I look at it. It's not too simple. To, oh, no, it's a disappointment. Yeah, you, you put the players in a, in a difficult position. You, you, you need to whore yourself out and go all over the world to go get your money back. That's just not the way. That's not the way you take care of your players, man. Um, let's see. Big O, I saw a story that Mike McDaniel hired a coach to help him manage the offense. Um, no, I haven't seen that. It's just an offensive assistant. I didn't see. Did it say game strategist anywhere? I haven't seen that. Who reported that? Anybody report that they hired a game strategist? Just says offensive assistant. That's it. He could be helping on the running game. He could be helping the passing. Not a strategist. Big O with Beck, his weakness was not that he didn't have an NFL level talent, that his physical attributes to overcome it was never, was never mental. Yeah. Again, none of that. He was a, a terrific college quarterback, and he didn't make it in the NFL. Big deal. So what, bro? Who gives a shit? That doesn't mean you can't be a great coach. Bill Belichick wasn't anything in the NFL at all. Okay? Never sniffed the NFL. None of that has anything to do with it. Vince Lombardi wasn't dominating the NFL, bro. He was a coach, not a player. You know, there's plenty of people like that, dude. Plenty of people because it's what you see. You know, 
what you see. And then somebody that has better talent than you will be able to do what you see. You were not given the God-given ability to be able to then compete at that high level. You know, you're great in you're great in Pee Wee, and then you're great in JV, and then you're great in high school, and then you're great in college, and then you get to the NFL and you're not even average. You know, it's a whole different ballgame. That doesn't mean you can't coach. It has nothing to do with it. One doesn't have anything to do with the other. Never made sense for him to play Saturday. It didn't even pay off, right? They tied. That's another mismanagement. After all that shit, you tied the game. Embarrassing. That was like a loss for me on Saturday. Tying Colorado was a You played Messi and you tied? That's some weak-ass shit, dude. Uh, neither was Shula. We need an O-line to give Tua more time and help plays develop time to go through progressions. Amen? Oh, who do you think the pick is at round one? Don't know yet. We'll, uh, we'll get to, you know, when we get to the draft and we find out who are the players off the board, then I'll, uh, then I'll approach it. Then I'll talk about it. Uh, Tavondre Sweat could be a guy in the second round. He could last now. He could drop down. Got that DWI. So we'll see if the Texas kid, he's not a first rounder. He, uh, I, I don't think anybody was taking him in the first round, to be quite honest. The people I've been talking to, they told me he's a lock in the second round. But now he could drop all the way to the Dolphins. Not bad. Not bad. Now, you got to find out about this kid. Is he a knucklehead? Or was it a mistake? That's all. Because any of us, as I've said millions of times, any of us could have a, I've never had it, but we're all human beings, dude. Anybody can make a mistake. You think you're straight. You had an extra beer or two and, you know, you got stopped and you're a little bit over the speed, over the drinking limit. And, you know, you got a DWI, DUI, whatever. Um, I get it. Uh, not only condone it, but I get it. Now, if this is a guy that's had it, uh, long legal history and other then you, you can't touch them but if it's just one mistake you know we're all human bro we're all human we all can make mistakes uh weight loss uh requires a whole med adjustment yes sir it does i found that out yesterday <laughs> uh ad dancer says big up praying your health uh i'm in fort lauderdale paul in connecticut i'm fine bro i'm good I'm good. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm I'm good. It was just, you know, just a freakish thing. It's all good. Thank you all for caring, man. That means a lot. Spo was never a great player in college, but he's the best coach in the of course, dude. That's just, I mean, that's not a conversation. I mean, I, I I hope we're not having that conversation. That's kind of a really stupid conversation. If anybody thinks that you have to be a great coach to be a great a great player to be a great coach, that's the stupidest thing in the world. So, you know, because I saw Frankie kind of, you know, take a backhanded shot. He didn't say it directly. I'm not blaming you, Frankie, but I'm kind of like um, I'm kind of killing it off before it starts. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the stupidest thing there is in the world. OK, most great players, they want nothing to do with coaching. Pat Riley was a role player. He was a defensive specialist period he wasn't even a good player he wasn't a great player he wasn't an all-star he wasn't anything he's one of the greatest minds that the game has ever seen personally i think he's the best of all time because of coaching and building i you know that's uh, that's rare i've never seen that phil jackson never did that other half he's done it and he's produced and he's produced coaches under his tree and everything. I mean, Pat Riley is one of the greatest. And he was less than average as a player. It's the dumbest thing in the world. So that's why I want to cut it off just in case anybody wants to bring that shit up. I, I've had this conversation. I'm at 34 years. It's come up many times about that kind of stuff and you know it's just there's always a few people that think oh uh, he wasn't a great player why should i trust him and that's the stupidest thing there is in the world dumb ignorant okay 
Uh, let's see. Thank you. Da, uh, what is it? Uh, Dawson or Dasso Hunid? I don't know what that is, but appreciate you. Says so praying for your brother. Everything's good. You, you could go rewind to the beginning and I tell the whole crazy story about what happened to me yesterday. It's like a 10 minute story. You know, and it's, uh, if you guys want to check it out. Yeah, it was, um, it was, uh, effed up yesterday for, for a short time. Um, let's see. Yeah. Your, your best coaches, 99% of them were not. Oh yeah. God, they weren't even good players, bro. Can't think of a hall of fame QB that had any interest in being an NFL coach. I, I, I want to say Sonny Jurgensen was a head coach for a short time. Um, look that up for me, Sean. I want to say Sonny Jurgensen was a head coach for a short time and he was a, he was a damn good quarterback. Um, I'm trying to think of great QBs. No, no. No, I don't remember. God, Doug Williams. Right? Doug Williams got into coaching. Did Doug Williams ever become a head coach? No, right? And I don't know if you called Doug Williams a great quarterback. He was really good. I want to say, let me see. I don't know if Doug Williams became a head coach. He did, right? Didn't he become a, a head coach, at least at the college level? Uh, let's see. Um, I was at one of the HBCUs. I can't remember which one, though. Oh, Jackson State? Was he uh, there? No, I, I want to say it was actually. Where did he go? Where did he attend? Well, he was a Tampa player, if that's what you're saying. No, no, but I think he went to like Alabama A&M or something. Well, and I think he, he was the head coach at Point Coopy Central LA in 91, Northeast High School in 93. So, no, nothing on the pro level. Morehouse. He was the coach for Morehouse. Morehouse. More, more, Morehouse uh, State. Yeah, and someone from Grambling State, too. Grambling, too, from a 98 to 2000. Like, that's like the best QB I remember now lately. And it, Sonny Jurgensen, was I right? No, he was, it doesn't have anything coaching. He was on the radio side. He took oh, a radio for the commander, or, well, Redskins at the time. Okay. How, how come I thought he was for a short time? I'm not seeing anything on him. But. That he was a, a, a head coach, man, somewhere. Let me see something here. After yeah. football goes into broadcasting career. Yeah, and then... No, 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 no. I might be thinking of somebody else. No, you're right. Nothing there. Nothing there. Um, but yeah, just great coach, great QBs don't they don't want to coach, bro. Why? You know, you're not gonna get him a coach. It's the dumbest thing in the world. Uh, so but yeah, uh it's hard, man. It's hard, it's hard. Williams was a colleague. There you go. You guys got it in, George. Uh, yeah, I think so. Definitely one of those schools. Yeah, he was he he but there aren't a lot. It's hard for me to come up with them. And I'm pretty good at my knowing my football history. Uh, I'm pretty damn good at that. And um, yeah, I, it's just not common. It's just not normal for for great players to want to be coaches. It's just a tough thing for them. Uh, let me get to uh, a little music and entertainment before we do anything else. Hey, yes, yes, sir. Wouldn't uh, the other side of the argument be Jim Harbaugh? Oh, yeah, it's a good one. Not a great, at him as a head coach. Right, not a great quarterback. He was a solid quarterback. Okay, Captain Comeback was all right. He wasn't anything great. Uh, but, yeah, there you go. There's one. Yeah, but not a great – he's not a great quarterback. No, no, That's no, by point. all means. I'm saying the, the reverse side of that argument would be Jim Harbaugh is probably the perfect one. He wasn't great, but he became a good head coach. And yeah. somebody in the comments just put Bart Starr was head coach of the Packers. Was that maybe who you're thinking of? I don't know. I'm just – Yeah, maybe, maybe. Was it Bart Starr the one? It might be. That he was the head coach of the Packers, so. He was? Okay, there you go. There you go. Very few, man. 
very few are are going to actually do that you know very few you see um so i can because some of you obviously probably didn't see the guy play but i watched the guy play and here's jim harbaugh's career he didn't have a bad career okay uh he threw 129 touchdowns and 117 interceptions okay so he completed 58.8 percent of his passes he threw for 26,288 yards his best year was 1995 with indianapolis and in that year he threw 17 touchdowns and five interceptions for 2575 yards he started 12 games that year and they went seven and five during those 12 games so you know harbaugh again he had some moments you know but he was Gardner Minshew? Yeah. Let me see. 100 and, uh, what did I say? 129 and uh, 117, right? I think I spelled Minchu wrong. Yes, I did. Okay. Um, so, so far, he's got in his career 59 touchdowns and 24 interceptions. So, he's actually, he's a lesser um, Gardner Minchu. Put it that way. That's what Jim Harbaugh is. A lesser Gardner Minchu. So, yeah, he's a coach, but he's not a great quarterback. You know. Jim Harbaugh had that crazy year in 95 when he led the Coast of the AFC Championship game against the Steelers to this day, one of the best conference championship games I've seen. Yeah. Yeah, he had a moment. He had a moment. But he wasn't a great quarterback by any stretch. You know. He was, uh, he was serviceable is what I would call him. Uh, today, let's go with birthdays on April 9th. We start off with little Nas X, who's 25. Kristen Stewart, 34. Leighton Meester, actress, 38. Ellie El, El Fanning, movie actress, 26. You got to help me here, Sean. Do I get a thumbs up here? Bianca Belair, 35. I got two thumbs up there. Okay, because I have no idea who she is. I don't know if it's legit. Hugh Hefner was born on this date in 26. We lost him in 2017. Dennis Quaid is 70 years old today. Let's see. There's another Lucy. Oh, it's Lucia Lou. She's an Instagram star. I was going, there's another Lucy Lou. You can't take her name. Uh, let's see who else. Lisa Guerrero is 60. Cynthia Nixon, actress, 58. And those are the folks celebrating some birthdays today. Now let's go with a little music history on April 9th. We start off in 1965 where the Rolling Stones made their live TV debut on the UK show Ready, Steady, Go. In 73, Queen made their debut performance at London's Marquee Theatre. In 1970, on this date, Paul McCartney announced his breakup with the Beatles in a type statement he included with the copies of the solo album the singer sent to the British press. In a letter, he attributed the split to personal differences, musical differences, business differences, but most of all, because he wanted to spend more time with his family. Yoko. In 84, R.E.M. released her second album, Reckoning. What an album. What an album. Ooh. I want to say, um, what's that? Uh, South Central Station is on that album. Anyway, uh, Pantera's Far Beyond Driven was the number one album in America on this date in 1990.
four. We groove with Pantera. Okay. Music-wise, what else do we have? John Fogarty, by the way, has expanded his celebration tour. And let me tell you something. He's in his 70s. You will get great energy, and he sounds phenomenal. We have no Florida dates, but there is South Carolina and Jersey and Pennsylvania and uh, New York. So go check out the dates. They've got European dates for any of our friends out in Europe. All right. Berlin. So uh, let's see where else. And then back here in the United States, California and Washington and Oregon, all that. So East Coast one end, West Coast on the other. George Thorogood will be in some of those dates. So if you love John Fogarty and his music, you may want to go check that out. Uh, what else? Twisted Sister, by the way. I love Twisted Sister. I've only seen them once and I know they've lost a couple of people. So, but they still have D Snyder. And so D Snyder says the Twisted Sister offers their re to reunite have come close to impossible to reject. The singer admitted that the surviving band members had begun ve very general discussions about how new shows might be presented and speculated on why the group is facing such a demand to get back. As a result of all the bands retiring and dying, the offers get bigger and bigger for the holdouts to come back, Snyder told Hook Rocks in a recent interview. We're on eight years now of not playing with no intention of coming back. But my father, he says, everything before the word but is bullshit. And at some point, you've got to say, well, how can I say no to that? Snyder said he hadn't reached out to the point where it was getting close such that the members had begun thinking in the event that these numbers do get there, they sure as hell seem to be going in that direction. How are we going to do this? Although he last predicted that Twisted Sister would return to play political events during 2024, he said the new thinking was a recent, uh, recent occurrence, adding that the conversation has gone from never to in this event, they make, this a, make us an offer we can't refuse. What's the plan? So he said lightheartedly, and there's some very general discussions on that involving personal trainers, diets, hair extensions. And at the first time in eight years, that's the that's how the conversation has changed. He says, we've managed to fix friendships and be friends. And that to me is really what I wanted to do in the first place when he's talking about surviving members and keeping it going and all that. So I wouldn't mind seeing D. Snyder one more time. I missed him on his solo album. If you did not get to listen to his last solo album, it's awesome. Awesome. Really, really good shit. Man. Really impressed with it. So that's cool to see. And maybe we get a little Twisted Sister. I like that. Nothing wrong with a, a little extra Twisted Sister. What else do we have here in entertainment? Oh, dude, this is a screwed up and twisted story. Now, we got 162 people right now on the board, okay? I want, I'm going to read this story to you, and I want to know if you would do this, okay? Because I don't think I would. I don't know. I, it's kind of like weird you know what i'm saying i don't it, it's hard all right the libertines which is a, a european band pete doherty is part of it and I, a lot of people in this country don't keep up with the libertines i actually have their music so they revealed that they bought a the bathtub that jim morrison died in for their margate hotel the Albion Rooms. The band released their fourth album, All Quiet on the Eastern Esplande, last Friday, making their full-length record in almost a decade, the first one. It's currently on course to hit number one in the UK. Again, they're not big over here, but whatever. They're, they're actually pretty good. Pete Doherty's been a mess in the past and all that with his drug addictions and all that. I, maybe he's got his shit straight now. It looks like it. But anyway, during a new interview with Matt Wilkinson of Apple, P. Doty and, and Carl Barrett talked about achieving their dream of opening their own Libertines hotel and studio space in 2020. 
We also got the bathtub that Jim Morrison died in, which we're going to be putting in one of the rooms. He explained at one point in the chat, the front man of the doors passed away in Paris in 71 at age 27. He was found dead in the bathtub of the apartment he was staying in with the official cause of death being ruled as a heart failure. Due to French law, however, no autopsy was carried out as no foul play was suspect, suspected at the time. Doherty continued, there's a fellow who's my wife's cousin knows his cousin was basically the landlord. And he's not interested in music and even less interested in musical mythology. And so he's just been going on about this bathtub, which people have been trying to buy off of him. He doesn't want it. He thinks it's morbid to make money off of it. So I said, well, we'll take it for the hotel. He added, I also said to Carl, and obviously Carl knows me for years, knows I have a tendency to exaggerate and, well, lie. But this is one of the bang, honest truths, and it's actually there. The revelation came after Barrett explained that he had purchased another piece of rock memorabilia, Jimi Hendrix's coat. Someone convinced me to buy it in an auction. It was going cheap. It was because there was they were about to do a movie coming out. Andre 3000 was playing Jimi Hendrix. Jimmy all by my side. And it was really going to revitalize the Hendrix estate and all sort of the brick and brack. Elsewhere in the conversation, Brad explained, we set up the hotel with grand ambitions and a lot of objectives we, which we achieved. Now, personally, being very close to it and having to deal with a lot of the runnings and whatnot, I think we've done that. And I think we really need a studio where artists can stay, where we don't have to shove them down the road. So it's kind of cool that they're going to build a hotel and a studio so artists can stay there if they're performing in that area. And then they can also warm up and, and tune in in the studio. That's pretty cool. Or maybe make music or whatever they're doing on their off time. So it's cool that they're opening up their own hotel. So the question I have for you is, now, if you're not a rock person or anything like that, you probably won't give a shit about this. But if you know you can rent the room that has Jim Morrison's tub in it where he died, he died, Neil Rogers reference, you don't know it, sorry, can't help you. Anyway, um, so if you know that's there, would you rent the room? Would you use the tub? It's not the same room he died, but it is the same tub. So I'm just wondering, is it too freaky for you or would you, would you rent it? And would you like shower in it? Give me the answer. Would you shower in a dead man's tub? I got to say no. I, I think I'm drawing the line there. Oh, what's the greatest single rock album in your opinion? Bro, that's hard. That's really, really hard, bro. That is super difficult. Um, Big O, can you guys, can you be a guy on the Miami Heat show? What's the Miami Heat show? I don't know what the hell that is. Um, uh, did you know that the Beatles officially ended a legal entity when John Lennon signed the papers while vacationing at the Polynesian Resort in Walt Disney World? No, I did not know that. That's pretty cool. So would you guys rent a room? And, and would you even use the tub that Jim Morrison died in? That's going to be a negative for me, says Lenny. A-Rod says no. Eddie Lepp says, if the room was cheap enough, sure. Gordon Shumway says, hell no. Jordan T says, I'll pass. Miami Heat Zone says, Big O, you can be a guest on the Miami Heat Show. I, I don't know what the Miami Heat Show is, my brother. I have no idea. Send me a DM and um, and um, I'll, we'll talk. You know what I mean? Um, I have no problem joining uh, shows. Uh, what, what do you got there, Sean? No, no, I like, he's asking you to be on his show. That's what he's saying. Oh, I see. Well, send me a DM, my brother. Go on Twitter and send me a DM. Oh, by the way, I'm on today. I'm on today with Marissa Marino and Dolphins Talk today at um, at 8 o'clock, right? I think 8.30, okay? So today at Dolphins Talk, I am going to, um, I think it's Manny and Marissa that I'm going to be on with today at 8.30, okay? So I think it's there. 
I think it's there. Um, or Finn's Factor. Is that it? Yes, there it is. There it is. Aha. Wait a minute. There. I just reposted it on Twitter. Marissa Marino put it out. Tonight's the night. Big O Show joins us live at 8.30 to talk all things Dolphins. Bearded Fanatic and I will be starting the fun at 8.15. Can't wait to see you all then. So I uh, I just retweeted the link. Uh, so you can um, so you can uh, check out the link if you want to catch us tonight at 8.30. Uh, I'll be on with Marissa and Manny. So, uh, yeah, if, um, just reach out to me on DM. And then I'll, and then I'll see what I can do. Um, oh, I don't think I ever asked you what's your experience working on Mad Dog. I loved it. Have no, but loved working on Mad Dog. May disagree ninety percent of the time with whatever Mad Dog's takes are because they're really off the cuff and old. Uh, but uh, but I had a great time working there. Good people overall. I enjoyed it. It's Beasley, uh, Paxson. Um, Adiba Den, who I love that man. He is, you know, one of the first guys that gave me a job and he's always been a, a, a super good human being to me. Um, you know, I enjoyed my time working at James Crystal, even though it ended up in bankruptcy, but they treated me like a, like a human being. So for that, I appreciate it. Um, and, and I enjoyed my time in Sirius too. Uh, CBS was garbage. Intercom's garbage. Um, twelve ten was pure, unadulterated garbage, hot ass garbage. Uh, Onside was a total disaster. Um, you know I've worked in places that I don't like. Um, that I enjoyed my time there. Yes, I enjoyed my time there. You know, uh, I would do a little satellite again. You know, that, that's something that I would do. I don't think I would ever do local radio ever again. That would not be something that I would enjoy. Uh, but uh, I could do satellite still, you know, something like that. But I'm I'm super happy doing what I'm doing, man. I'm super happy. It, the, the best four years of my life in, in, in this business has been what I've done now the last four years. It's been the best doing this. The most satisfying thing there is out there. I can stand on my own. And I don't need a station. I don't need anybody. And it's uh, it's pretty satisfying. It really is. Uh, only if there's a grand piano in the room so we can jam. Oh, Jules, you're special. Uh, Tom House was another guy. Yes, that's it. Nice job by you, Rojas. Tom House was the other guy. He was an ex-major league pitcher and pitching coach. He trained a lot of pitchers and NFL quarterbacks. Yes, Tom House. He was in Atlanta, I want to say. Yes. Uh, the room is people are strange. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I've ever asked. Oh no, you got that. Uh, it would be an honor because I would be a part of the end. Okay. Orlando, any thoughts on my Coinbase question? Oh, I'm sorry. What was your Coinbase question? I don't see all of them, bro. There's a lot coming in. So I kind of like pick and choose. Let me see if do it this way. Trying to find that other question, Ocala. I'm trying to find it, my brother. Can you find the other question from Ocala Joe from Coinbase? Whatever he was, Orlando, any thoughts on my Coinbase question? And let me see, because I can't find the prior text. I'm sorry, Ocala Joe. Can you copy and paste it and put it up again so I can see it if you don't mind, Ocala Joe? I don't see anything. I'm going back through. I don't know. Yeah, I don't see it either. I can go through or if it's way back in the beginning or something. Yeah. I'm at 1123 right now. I don't see anything. Yeah. Can you repeat the question, please, Ocala Joe, and I'll, and I'll answer it. Okay. So I don't know what you were going to ask me about Coinbase, but you should have a Coinbase account. I can tell you that. And you can buy stuff on Coinbase, but just then make sure you move it off Coinbase to your cold storage wallet eventually. Okay. That's what you want to do for sure. 
And remember, you guys out there, you can make a donation through Cash App or Venmo at Cash Big O Show. That is Cash Big O Show, Cash App or Venmo. And you can make a Bitcoin donation, which, as you all know, that is my favorite type of donation, a Bitcoin donation. You can send in your questions, comments, insults, and even a compliment if you happen to have one. Okay. Uh, oh, would you do it if it was Jimi Hendrix? Yeah, I would. Yeah, well, you know me. That's my guy. That's my guy. Uh, let's see what else. You guys enjoy the eclipse? We didn't talk too much about the eclipse. Um, I didn't really like, you know, where we were at. If I wasn't in the area of totality, I, I just watched it on television. I wasn't really, I didn't really care. I just, I'm hoping that we didn't get a bunch of people blinded. You know, I'm hoping that, you know, we didn't have idiots like the Trumpster and Odell Beckham that are like, you know, and like, come on, dude, you know. So I'm hoping that I saw a, I saw a video of a kid that had a microscope. And the moron was on the reverse side of the microscope. And so the, a, a beam of light came in and it burned him. And he got like, like, dumbass, what are you doing, bro? You're lucky it didn't get you in the eye. Like, it's like you think we're joking when we tell you don't look up to the sky. And then you just want to kind of test it. Um, Ocala Joe, you got to send that question. I need it, my brother so I can answer it or you can send it to me on DM on Twitter. If you want my brother, um, maybe did you send it earlier to me or something? I, I just don't see it, man. Um, Lenny says, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I don't see your tweet about a guest on that show. Well, I just retweeted it. So you're going to have to go to replies. Probably that's probably, you don't see it because you don't see on the regular timeline. You have to hit replies. Maybe, I don't know, but it's there. It's there. It's there. I just tweeted it. So you got to maybe give it a couple seconds or something. Make sure it posts. But it's there. This is it right here. Ooh. It looks like that. See? It's just hard to. Anyway. Fin Factor with Manny and Marissa. On Dolphins Talk. So we'll be there at 8.30 doing that. Okay? Uh, all right. What else? Uh, I think uh got the Zombies on Thursday. By the way, the Guess Who will be at the Sunrise Theater in Fort Pierce on Wednesday. Tonight, Madonna's at the Kaseya Center. Dream Theater is going to tour with Mike Portnoy for the first time in 10 years. It's pretty awesome. So right now it's only Europe uh, dates, but we need something in the U.S., but that's pretty cool. Mike Portnoy is probably one of my favorite drummers. He's really my favorite drummer right now on the planet. Um, so it's really cool to see that uh, Dream Theater is going to come back with Mike, and it's been a while. So I like that. Okay. Uh, no interest in the total eclipse of the moon. How about of the heart? By the way, I saw Jimmy Kimmel's thing, you know, from last night. They went out into the street to ask people about what is an eclipse. It's... It, it, it is unimaginable, unimaginable how stupid people are that so many of them did not know what an eclipse is. And the way they were described, you got you to gotta see this piece. Like Jimmy Kimmel has this thing every night where he puts out his highlights from the monologue and all that kind of stuff. And then there are skits inside of it. It's usually like 10, 12, 14 minutes, whatever. And you got to see the one from Monday because they ask people, what is an eclipse? and the answers were like, holy, like, really? Like, I knew what an eclipse was when I was a child. How do you not know what an eclipse is? And 
And then I tell you why people don't know anything about our financial system. What's going on with our dollar or everything? They don't even know what a freaking eclipse is. I mean, it's hilarious, bro. It's really hilarious. Ah. Uh... So that's it. I think I'm done, actually. I think I'm done. I told you I wasn't going to complete the third hour, but I got pretty damn close to 1249. From 22 minutes to nearly three hours for you today. Okay? And we don't do a lot of commercials, and we're not doing eight, 10-minute commercial breaks. Uh, you might get two minutes at the top of an hour or something like that, but you, you don't get a lot of commercial breaks in this thing. We, you, get, you get content. It's what we do. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, no, I don't see uh, anything here earth shattering on the uh, on the front. Uh, big O, go and ask what an eclipse is, and the majority would not know and call it racist. I don't know. It was just funny, dude. You got to see that segment. It's hilarious how stupid people are. Stern used to do the homeless Jeopardy question. Name an Olympic sport, homeless lady, the Knicks. Uh, not that I'm excusing them, but it has to be nerves on being on TV. You see it even in those games. No, 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 no. Ray, it's on YouTube. Just put Jimmy Kimmel live and it'll come up. Monday's highlights. I promise you, one, you're going to laugh your ass off. But two, you will be amazed. Had at how stupid these people are. And it has nothing to do with nerves. Half of them are super confident about their stupid response. You got to watch it. You have to watch it. It's free. It's towards the end of that segment, by the way, to, to save you. If you don't want to go through the whole thing, it's probably the, the final part, but you got to watch. It's hilarious. I mean, they do this all the time on the streets there with Jimmy Kimmel. And it's funny, usually what they do, but it's just, wow. Like, it's beyond me. Like, these people are convinced the crazy shit they're telling you is what an eclipse is. I don't even want to tell you. I want you to watch it yourself and laugh your ass off on your own. Enjoy yourselves. What's really sad is that those people can reproduce and vote. I know, Gordon. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And they turn out to be Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, Jewish space lasers. You know, she's got, she thinks that uh, the eclipse is part of uh, God sending us a message. Yeah, no, I see them all the time. I see these king size stupid people like MGT. Uh, I, everybody in Rochester was in the path of the eclipse of totality, but we had cloudy weather. Yeah, I was, uh, I heard about you in Rochester, Ragin'. Yep. I heard about you guys. And, uh, give me one second here. I'm going to show you guys. Okay. I'm going to show you guys, um, what happened in Rochester for the pandemic. It's pretty amazing. It really is. Okay. Got to give me a second here to pull it up. Because I had to guy send it from my phone to myself. And then I got to get it in my email. And then when I get it in my email, then I can bring it up here. And then hopefully we can. Uh... There we go. Okay. I have what happened in Rochester. I have all, I have everything. Check it out. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. What do I do here? On this part. Oh, no. Can't do it like that. Hold on. Now,
Now I think I can do it. Okay. Now I can show you exactly how they enjoyed how they enjoyed the uh, the eclipse in in uh, Rochester. It's pretty cool. Will I be able to do that? Wait a minute. Now I'm. Hmm. I'm going to have to send it to you, Sean. I'll say forward it over to me. I'll try to figure it out. Yeah, I'm going to have to forward it to you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forwarded it to you. All right. You could, you uh, you pull it up, and we could show people what happened in Rochester yesterday with the eclipse. Okay? Hopefully, you'll have it there in a second, which I'm sure you will. Uh, it's it explains it all in graphic detail, and it really shows how the people in Rochester were able to enjoy the full eclipse and all its glory. Don't believe what Ragin is telling you. Okay, Ragin is not really being accurate here. They really enjoyed it over there. I'm telling you, you you, you got to check it out. It's it's guaranteed. Pull it up there, Sean. Look at how they enjoyed it. Is that amazing or what? Look what you see in Rochester, and look what they see everywhere else. Wouldn't you rather be in Rochester? Those people in Rochester kick some ass during the uh, eclipse. You're in Indianapolis. You're seeing the whole thing. You're in Rochester. You're not seeing the whole thing. That's exactly the play-by-play. Ragin had fun. He really was able to figure out the eclipse. Ragin, Lisa. There's somebody else that's a that's a regular here that's from that area too. I know Lisa and Ragin, but there's one more person that does catch it constantly. But there you go. Rochester truly enjoyed it. Don't you wish you flew to Rochester? At no point in your life, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. All right, let's go. Move on. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, no point in your life do you want to fly to Rochester. I, I, I get that. That's not for the eclipse, not for anything else. Right? I'm with you. I'm with you. It's all good. 68,657. This is beautiful. Wow, a little shakeout right before. I like it. And by the way, we are... Just so you'll know, we are right now 10 days, 10 hours, 1,552 blocks away from the halving. So, in in just under 11 days, baby, whew, it's going to get ugly. Uh, you're not wrong. We don't have bright people in this world. There's people that would uh, cheat on a Lala, uh, would cheat on Lala Anthony. <laughs> John Padilla says, sending a super chat to support my favorite sports show, Bay Area Fins fans. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And I feel terrible for you A's fans out there. But you got to let it go, man. Got to let it go, unfortunately. Got to let it go. Go uh, enjoy the teams on the other side of the Bay. Oakland's not a, a city that can afford pro teams, man. What a sad story over there. All right, we are out of here. We thank you. We did 22 minutes yesterday. We did three hours today. So pretty good. I, I think I'm back, right? I think my energy's all right. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're all right. We're all right. I'm uh I'm John Wick. I'm thinking I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. So I'm John Wick. There you go. We thank Sean Stanley, the man that masters his entire platform every single day. We thank David Ferronis, talking a little Dolphins football. We thank Manny Navarro, talking a little Canes and college hoops. We thank all of you for tuning in, sending in a super chat like John Padilla, like Ho Yoon, Cash App or Venmo, Cash Big O Show. We thank you for that, as always. Whenever you're listening and watching any time of the day or night, we love you. Thank you for supporting us. We'll see you tomorrow, Wednesday, live from Canesware. 
same time, same place, same bat channel. This is the